Southwest Conference on offense, number one in the Southwest Conference on defense. But place kicker Eric Franklin has been erratic, yet his 48-yarder against SMU won the game and kept Texas AM in the conference race. And it'll all be decided tonight, partly as a result of this kick. Against Arkansas, quarterback Kevin Murray showed his poise and talent as the Aggies posted their second Southwest Conference upset in as many weeks. And Arkansas learned why the Aggies are the conference's best team on defense. Jackie Sherrill's young team is in the race, which will be decided tonight. Who will join the 1986 Cotton Club? Who will go to the Cotton Bowl? CFA football, happy Thanksgiving edition from Kyle Field, College Station, Texas. The Longhorns and the Aggies. Make no mistake about it, the Cotton Bowl is at stake. The loser will go to the Blue Bonnet Bowl, but this crowd is here not for the Cotton Bowl. This was sold out a long time ago because whenever the Aggies and the Longhorns mix it up, it is a cause for a big crowd and high emotion. More than 4,000, more than capacity, are scheduled to be in Kyle Field tonight. And why not? Added the conference leaders, Texas A&M, 6-1. Texas, 6-1. Baylor knocked off by Texas last week, out of it. Arkansas knocked off by Texas A&M two weeks ago, out of it. Winner tonight, it is the Cotton Bowl. But more than that, the bragging rights, not only for this year, but for years to come in the state of Texas. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. I am Jim Simpson, the man on my left, having enjoyed turkey with us all this afternoon. We're not going to see a turkey tonight, I guarantee you. But I also know you, Paul McGuire, whenever you talk about a natural rivalry such as this, you take those statistics and all of those statements and tear them up and throw them over your left shoulder. Jim, you forget about everything that's happened. You forget about the Cotton Bowl because once this game starts, they're not thinking about that anymore. You talk about recruiting, the things are going to happen to these two teams. Texas A&M, it's been a long time, man, since they've been thinking about Cotton Bowl. But when you have all the stats, I don't care what the quarterbacks have done, I don't care about all the great backs and how good the defense is and the offense is, when these two teams kick off, throw it all out the door and grab your socks. <laughs> this is the first time since 1943 that these two teams have met head-on with the Cotton Bowl, with the conference title at stake. And it would be if the Aggies win the first time since 1977 since they have gone. We'll come back in just a moment with a look at both Texas and Texas A&M. But right now you're looking at Bevo. Hook them horns. That's what they're saying from up Austin way and around the state of Texas and across this world. And on the other side, of course, it's Gigham. But for Texas, they won 17 conference championships, 31 bowl games, 18 cotton bowls. They're hoping for 19th and two national titles. Tradition, Texas has. And more about the Longhorns when they come back to Kyle Field. The essence of bobsledding. The new sled feels like gliding on silk. The essence of shaving. This is new Atra Plus, an incredible advance in Gillette shaving smoothness. The Plus is the unique lubricating strip that glides the razor effortlessly. You never felt anything smoother. New Atra Plus by Gillette. The essence of shaving. Nowadays, when a businessman gets stuck in his car, he doesn't have to be just stuck in his car. He can be talking to a client, or a prospective client, or be in touch with his own office. He can be doing a million different things if he has our mobile net cellular car phone service. Just imagine how much more productive you could be with mobile net. G. No, GTE. One could ever deny You're on your way to the top And along the way You've always known just who you are Where you're going, you've always known it No other beer is brewed and aged like exceptionally smooth Michelob Where you're going, it's Michelob 
There's Cotton all over College Station and back in Austin, Texas, too. They've been waiting for this game tonight, as they always do. And as for the Longhorns, they're ready. Coach Fred Aker's Texas team was not picked to do this well in the Southwest Conference race. But here they are, tied for the lead, tonight with a 50-50 chance for the championship and the Cotton Bowl. But about the Aggies, Coach Fred Akers is respectful. Well, they're good. They're, they're talented physically. Uh, they're a balanced football team. They, they throw the ball well. They run the ball well. They're a big power back type of offense, and uh, their quarterback is, is not making many mistakes at all. He's getting the ball into the places where it's supposed to be, and that balance always concerns you because you can't zero in on one thing. He's got a combo. The Longhorn players also have respect for the Aggies. Right. Yeah. They're a lot like Baylor in the, in the passing attack, but uh, I think they've got a lot better running game. Uh, uh, Roger Vick's a good running back. Murray does a good job uh, audible and calling off, you know, and uh, they are. They're real balanced and uh, got a big offensive line, and they run hard. It, it's going to be tough to stop them. We're going to have to have some balance ourselves, and uh, I don't think we can uh, do one thing. We're going to have to run. We're going to have to throw the ball well, too. Uh, they're very aggressive. They run a lot of uh, blitzes, especially with their secondary, trying to bring up the, the bad plays, and we're going to have to recognize them. Well, they're very good. We've known that all year. They've played some great games, and uh, we're just going to go out and try to be consistent with what we do, try not to turn the ball over too much, and uh, just go at them as best we can. Well, we have some things. They blitz a lot, and we're going to try to take, it adva take advantage of that a little bit and, uh, you know, just try to keep our poise in, in Kyle Field because that's a tough place to play but uh you know we're we're getting ready for them and i think it's going to be a great game i believe we're gonna have to just come off the ball last year uh, they came down here and pretty much embarrassed us and uh we sat back and didn't come off the ball i think that's what we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to attack up front and uh not sit back and wait on them it is only 90 miles from austin to college station texas but the teams and fans of these two schools are about 180 degrees apart it is the big game in the big state of texas it is truly a big game, Paul McGuire, but in all of that, Texas was talking about Texas A&M, not about Texas, and the Longhorns have improved mightily over the last half dozen games. I think the man that's improved is Stafford, their quarterback, and what they have done with him, Jim, instead of having him drop back, because he is so agile and he can run so very well, they're moving him in almost like a moving pocket to give him the option to throw the ball or to run the ball, and he does it well. You know, the last three games have not allowed a single touchdown pass. They've got a lot of statistics. Stafford has been throwing for 70% since he's become a starter. And here they are talking to us about Texas A&M. Make no mistake, the Longhorns are here and are here to play. The Aggies, on the other hand, have what is known as a 12th man, 12 non-scholarship people that go down on kickoffs only. Now, our question to them is, why would anybody want to be a 12th man player? You see this face? Who would care? Because I want to kill someone! Because my mom wanted me to. Love a Terminator! It's a great way to meet women. Because I love to crack their heads! Because we float down the field like butterflies and we sting like bees. Cold-blooded and crazy. <laughs> If you need life insurance protection, a good chunk of it, but you don't want to keep paying for it forever, look into Quick Pay, the different kind of life insurance from Transamerica. With Quick Pay, you decide the number of years you want to pay for your coverage. Three, five, seven, that's it. You're paid up for life. You're protected for life. Let me show you. Say you're like me, 40, don't smoke, and you need $100,000 of protection. And you want your payments to end in five years. Look, you pay $1,569 a year. A total of $7,845 in premiums, not a cent more. You have $100,000 in protection from the word go. All along the way, your Transamerica Quick Pay policy builds tax-deferred cash value at high current interest rates. And you don't pay even one premium after the first five years. Quick Pay from Transamerica. Find out about it. Quick. For complete details about Quick Pay, call 800-554-9000, toll free. That's 800-554-9000. Call... Texas and Texas A&M coming up. At halftime, we will have a feature for you about the bonfire. 
And Jackie Sherrill said the first time he climbed up field was 55 feet. Someone said, don't drop him. He's too expensive. Well, this is his fourth year for Jackie Sherrill. And way last September, he was talking about the kind of ball club he was going to have this year. I don't know if this is what he expected. But in September, he was talking about his ball club and how really young this team is. We're in overlap years, meaning that uh, we're still bottom heavy for freshmen, sophomores. Uh, we have approximately 48 freshmen, redshirt freshmen. The real satisfaction is knowing that you have a young football team and, and you're, you're playing for the marbles. You're playing uh, for what you really strive for, and that's being able to put yourself in a, uh, in a position to compete for the championship or the, uh, the conference championship. If there is a concern among Aggie fans, it is a kicking game. Of course, Jackie Sherrill has more fears than just the kicking game. You know, it's going to boil down to uh, if our offensive line can handle the front four. Uh, you know, that's that's the key. The key to play Texas is if you can can win the battles or half of the battles up front. If we keep them off the quarterback with the type of results that we've had throughout the season, then we can have a good night throwing the football and we'll be successful. If we don't, then we're going to be in trouble. The main factors will be how our guards match up against their defensive tackles. Uh, it'll be a direct matchup. They're not fancy. They come right at you and go man to man on you. And we've got to be able to get some movement on those people so that our big fullbacks can ramble up in there and gain the yards that we're accustomed to gaining. I'll tell you what, they just line up and they tell you where they're going. And it's just, it's, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, actually. You either you do it or you don't do it. We're going to have to, you know, put our hats on the correct people and just sustain the sustain the blocks and uh, as far as pass protection goes, just keep on doing what we've doing, doing, been doing all year long, and that is just uh, pick up the right people or take our time, don't get frustrated on uh, certain situations and just play ball just like we've been doing. All There's nothing different about this game than any other game. I'm sure it's a key matchup, but I, those guys have done a super job all year. You know, I don't think it's going to be a big problem because I mean they picked up all kind of stunts this year, and uh, you know Texas sure Texas has a good defense behind you. We have a good offense line, and that's going to make for a good match. But I'm not really concerned about my offense line because I know those guys will get the job done. All American Johnny Holland knows what it takes. On the field, you know, whoever's we'll hungry, go out and get it. We are in Kyle Field, and the Longhorns of Texas have just come onto the field, and this is a wild crowd on both sides of the stadium tonight. And Paul McGuire, Texas will have to go against one man that we've not mentioned yet. We've seen him in our little features here, but he leads the Southwestern Conference in passing, and that is Kevin Murray, the Aggies quarterback. You know, we touched about it earlier. Here's a young man. When you take a look at Kevin Murray, as how he has developed through this year. Jimmy has so much confidence in his receivers, but the main thing is the confidence he has in his arm, and the one thing that all good quarterbacks do is that's congratulate your offensive line, and he loves them. Take him out to dinner. <laughs> but what about the man that's running out of tailback now? Four knee operations, a junior, Edwin Simmons, 234 pounds, and they say he's right back where he was when he was recruited. Well, those are the knees of Edwin Simmons now. He's also six foot four, which you left out, and, and, and he's a huge man. I had a long talk with Edwin last year, and they didn't know whether he could play or not. He is now, after talking with Coach Akers about Edwin Simmons, as he is now starting to get back some of that form. He has lost some speed, but he realized, Jim, that now the knees are there, and if he gets hurt, there's nothing he can do about it. It's a mental thing when you hurt your knees. He's overcome that. Look out, Texas A&M. Well, David, you have a way. That's a three-point game. I tell you what, it is a great place to be. Kyle Field on Thanksgiving night, and remember, the Cotton Bowl is at stake. Winner goes on January 1st against Auburn. Thank you for your order, and be sure to look for your free gift. Would you like to receive a free gift, too, and save money at the same time? I'll be right back to show you how.
the old west. Not much left anymore. Just a few crumbling buildings, dusty mementos, and legends. Lots of legends, though not all of them square with the facts. That's why Time Life books got on a trail of the old west. Good thing, too. They rescued photographs you didn't know existed. Put it all down while you could still get the straight story about people. Like these two sons of a Baptist minister. They staged the first daylight bank robbery in U.S. history. Frank and Jesse James. Here's Clay Allison. Called himself a shootist. Hair triggered Bat Masterson who wound up a New York sports writer. And what kind of lady was wanted for horse stealing and bootlegging? That was no lady. That was Belle Starr. John Wesley Hart. Before the Texas Rangers caught up with him, he shot 44 men. One of them just for snoring too loud. And that's in your first book alone, The Gunfighters. A big, handsome volume with a look and feel of hand tool leather. Take 10 days to look it over. No obligation. Return it and you can forget the old West. Or keep it and about every other month you'll get another volume for the same free once over. The Great Chiefs, the Gamblers, the 49ers. Keep those you won't. Cancel any time. The Old West. You still find it in Time Life Books. Hi, I'm Kathy at Time Life Books. If you call now, you'll get the Gunfighters for just $4.95 plus shipping and handling. That's $8 off the regular price. Plus, you'll receive this Western belt buckle free when you purchase your first book. Call 1-800-453-6605. That's 1-800-453-6605. This offer ends soon, so call now. Skies are cloudy, temperature 43 degrees, wind is negligible about 9 miles per hour. We've had a lot of rain here this week, but only 20% chance tonight for the big game between the Aggies and the Longhorns. 4,000 more than capacity are jammed in in the end zone. Fred Akers rumors about his job, despite the fact his team, like that team of the Aggies, is 8-2, and 6-1 in the conference and could be on its way to the Cotton Bowl. A year ago, this man's team, Jackie Sherrills, went up to Austin, Texas, and won it in a stunner, 37-12. And like the Longhorns, they are 8-2 and 6-1 and and in the conference. And the Aggies have won the toss and have elected to kick off. And, Paul, that brings us to the 12th man again. Remember, we had them all wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving and saying in their own inimitable style of why they are the 12th man. <laughs> but remember, they're non-scholarship men. They carry their own numbers. And when we went to Texas Christian last week, that was their first road game of the year. They stay home because of non-scholarship. But they did go over to Fort Worth to play in that game. He's the Longhorns. There's Fred Aker setting his team out. And we will say one more time what a game this is in the state of Texas, where football is king from high school all the way up. And if you're an Aggie, you're an Aggie. And if you're Longhorn, you're Longhorn. And never the twain shall meet except once a year on the football field. Jim, we're looking at the 12th man, and I had the opportunity yesterday to spend about 45 minutes with those guys. There's, there's some 25 of them. And they're a little stranger than fiction. <laughs> but they love what they do. I mean, they, they wouldn't have it any other way. They don't really want to play. They, and this, is, this is what they want to do. Just run down on kickoff. And let me explain one other thing. It is probably the toughest special teams that you can go down on because everybody's got to take a shot at you. You just sacrifice your body, and there they are. What they do is allow just about 13 yards per return, no more than that. Scott Slater will kick it off. Barefooted, Eric Metcalf, he's slightly injured. Number two back there. And back there with him is Kevin Nelson. And Slater will kick it off, and you'll have a chance to take a look at this 12-man team. They are very effective. All former high school players, so they've been in action before. This is not throwing men to the wolves. And this will be Kevin Nelson after the short kick of the 10-yard line. And Nelson gets a trip up the middle and out near the 30-yard line, and Texas will start from about the 32. Longhorns with good... Field position will send out Brett Stafford. 70% his statistics since taking over as the starter. Number 10, a junior out of Belden, Texas. 58% overall. His running backs, Charles Hunter, 26. Darren Nelson, 34, the fullback. 
Wide receivers Everett Gay, 19. Russell Hayes, 14. Woody Maris, 95, the tight end. Houston, the starting at left tackle over, or rather, Erdl over Houston. He's hurt. Gatong, Chilton, Chester, and Stewart. That is Hayes in motion. And stood up is Charles Hunter. Hunter absolutely stood up, and getting up is Sammy O'Brien. And one of the matchups is going to be O'Brien, the nose guard, against Gene Chilton, the 270-pound center of Texas. Sadler, 99, O'Brien, 90, Muller, 82, the front three, Roper, 83, Kelm, 65, Holland, 11, and Howard, 73, the linebackers. Austin, broken foot, number one on the left corner, Flowers, 15 on the right, Bryant, 6, and Corrington, 10 are your safety second down and 10 they give the ball back and there goes Charles Hunter and Hunter's got the first down across the 45 yard line and Texas after being held on first down pick up a first down on second down Jim this is a great play to run against a team it's so pumped up in the beginning of a football game now watch for the over pursuing of the Texas A&M defense once they do that then Hunter just cuts back in. There's no one on the backside to pick him up. It's good blocking in the line of scrimmage and a good run downfield first down. Ball at the 46-yard line. Uh-oh, a couple of backs are moving, and that is Hunter with the ball, and Hunter is dragged down across the way. By number 73, Todd Howard, but... Both backs were moving, Norris and Hunter, so it'll be first and 15. Move it back five yards. Well, here we are, Paul. Thanksgiving night, College Station, Texas. Big game in Texas. The Cotton Bowl at stake. The loser will go to the Blue Bonnet Bowl. And I'll give you 100 bucks if you can find an empty seat in this place. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to make it. While they're walking back, that gives us a chance to tell us that our referee tonight is Joe Thomas. Bill Anger, the umpire. Linesman is Don Brown. The line judge, Bob Baker. Ron Underwood, the field judge. The side judge is Lloyd Dale. And Phil Luckett is the back judge. Move the ball back to the 41-yard line. First down, 15, Texas. No score. We've just gone through the first minute and 10 seconds. Gay is wide to the left and Hayes to the right. And here's Hunter. He's carrying every time, and he's got some more running room and running very well against that number one defense in the Southwest Conference, getting the five yards back. And Larry Kelm, the inside linebacker, number 65, made the stop. Jim, there's a super block of the right guard, Brian Chester, number 72. He just went back, moved to the outside, and trapped, and took his man, which is the linebacker on that side, out of the picture. If there is an advantage... And Texas does rate some advantages. It is in their good offensive line, of which four men are seniors. The others are juniors. And they give it a tailback again. Why this up on a good thing? But O'Brien is down the bottom there, number 90. A lot of other folks will get up. But O'Brien will be the last to get up. And he's the man who made the stop. So it is third down and about eight to go. Here's the situation. Now, we talked about... Brett Stafford, as far as is, is throwing the football, and what they're going to like to do to him now is roll him to the left and try to get to the outside and see if we can get a hold of Hayes or Gay, either one of the, the wide receivers. Hayes is wide to the left, and Gay is to the right. Third down and eight. Stafford has a big play capacity, but this time he's knocked down. Johnny Holland just voted day before yesterday the Football Writers Association All-American linebacker made the stop. It is fourth and long Texas. So when Stafford, Jim, rolls to his left, and we told you that's what he's going to do, just watch the pursuit. It's going to be Johnny Holland from the backside, and I think that's Kelm up there in front, number 65. No, excuse me, that's Domingo Bryant up in front, number six, number six, who's a strong safety force. And uh, Stafford didn't have a chance to throw the ball. John Telchik had six yards, averaging 48 yards per kick last week against Baylor. And they got to take that into the end zone, faking the catch, and we'll come back out to the 20-yard line. And we'll come back to Kyle Field. No score. The Aggies now have the football.
holiday greetings from Michelob. Where you going, it's Michelob. We're not a company, but we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge. We'll give you opportunities to learn, to develop, to perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career. A career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. The CFA on ESPN is brought to you by Exceptionally Smooth Michelob. Where you're going, it's Michelob. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by Jeep Comanche, the new truck on the road, it's worth a look. Kevin Murray, number 14. The quarterback leading the Southwest Conference in offense. Keith Woodside, 33, scheduled to start. As one running back, Anthony Tony, 25. The others will check them out for you. Jay Walker, 85. Jeff Nelson, number eight, is the man in motion. They're the wide receivers. And Murray's going to throw on first down. Has the time. One on one down the sidelines. And two men diving for the ball. Stephen Braggs was right there with Jeff Nelson. Now the interior line. Lewis Cheek, Randy Waddy, Matt Wilson, Randy Dawson, and Doug Williams, the good right tackle weighing 300 pounds. Defensively for Texas, McKinney, 87. Espinosa, 94. Reed, 98. Groner, 85, the front four. Allett, 48. Hager, 60. Dulabon, 39. The linebackers. Bragg, 6. Tillman, 11. The corners. Senegal, 5. And PB, 42. The safeties. Second down and 10. No score. Look at this setup in the backfield. They pitch back, and that is Anthony Tony with some running room and gets across the 25 to about the 26 yard line, where it'll be third down and four. Tackle made by Espinosa. Jim, on that first play from scrimmage when they ran Nelson downfield and he was covered by Braggs, they were both looking at the football and their feet got tangled up. And of course, this crowd here, I guess they're for Texas A&M, you say, and they wanted they wanted a penalty and there was none. Make no mistake, not only is a Texas band here, Paul, but a bunch of Longhorn followers are here also. Third down and four to go. That is Nelson, the man in motion. Murray back to throw. Murray throws across the middle and Nelson does hold on to it for the first down. He was hit by Chris Dulevan, the weak side linebacker, but held onto the ball just across the 30 yard line and it is Nelson slow in getting up. That's his 45th catch to lead the conference, but Dulevan really lowered the boom. Well, when Nelson comes across, Jim, the ball hits him in the hands and he bobbled the ball. As he goes back to get the ball, that's when Chris Dulevan watches back. Here he is, concentration on the ball, knows he's going to get hit, and he gets a helmet right, right square in the middle of his back. 10.44 to go, first quarter, the game at Kyle Field, A&M and Longhorns, no score. There's a new truck on the road. It's called Comanche. It's built by Jeep. It's worth a look. You know, when I started dipping Kodiak, I made my friend here real happy because it's his brand. Now it's my brand, too. Good and moist with a special cut that packs right. And it's got a big, fresh, wintergreen flavor. But <laughs> don't take my word for it. Just ask my friend here. He really got away with words, don't he? <laughs> Kyle Field has been filled up and then added some more. 
About 4,000 more than capacity. First down, Nelson came off the field under his own power. Tony carries the ball. And the stop is made there by the free safety Richard Peavy, number 42. Tony was doubtful whether or not he'd play tonight, although everybody plays in this game if they can shoot up at all, because of just overall fatigue and bruises. He picked up four yards there, marked the ball at the 35, out of the second down and six. You have no bruises in a game like this, Jim. <laughs> you better had not have any bruises in a game like this. They don't matter. Oh, somebody went the wrong That's way. That's right, and Murray hangs on to the football, and the Longhorns hang on to him. That was Rocky Reed, number 98, and that's a loss back to the 33-yard line. And it's going to be third down and eight. You don't know whether the quarterback turned the wrong way or, or Anthony Tony went the wrong way. Now watch. Murray goes that way. Tony's coming this way. He's looking for Tony. Tony's going into this hole. But you see the tackle on that side. Cheeks, number 79, releasing. I think Tony should have gone the other way. One back offense, two wide receivers, very wide to the left, and Jeff Nelson has come back in and now goes in motion. As on third and eight, Murray fires the ball across the middle, and there's the catch by Jeff Nelson, and he's got another first down. Jim, let me just say something about this play. You want to talk about a gutsy call. You remember two plays or three plays ago, they sent Nelson across the middle, and he got a, his back hammered by Dulavon. Here he comes back across the middle again. He knows he's going to get hit, and he makes the catch. Shows me something about toughness right there. Ball at the 43-yard line. Nelson coming out wide to the left, getting single coverage out there from Tony Tillman, the cornerback. And here's the pitch, and here comes Anthony Tony. Gee, did he run over Peavy? Ran right over the free safety Peavy. And picks up yardage out to the 49 and a half yard line. It'll be second down and about three. You must be prepared to make a tackle. And when you see Richard Peavy come up, number 42, to hit Anthony Tony, watch what happens here. Here comes Peavy. Here comes Tony. Wang. He just says goodbye to you. Thank you. Second down and short from near midfield. No score, first quarter. The Aggies have the football. And they give it to Tony, and he's got the first down inside the 45-yard line. Aggies moving the ball on the ground. They're the number one team in total offense in the Southwest Conference. Jim, I don't know if that was Dulabon, number 39. It comes right up the middle and misses right there. And then you see Anthony Tony pick up the first down. It was Dulabon in the backfield, missed the tackle. Nelson wide to the right. Again, they overload the right side, stacking two wide receivers and putting another wide right. And they give the ball to Tony again, and a flag goes down as Tony gets to the 41-yard line. Jim, what they're doing in that formation, they're putting the, the, the flanker out, but up on the line of scrimmage. They're taking the tight end off the line of scrimmage in a slot position, and they're putting the back, the fullback, right behind him or a right wide receiver behind him, and then they're going off tackle with their play. They're trying to get Texas to shift their defense to the outside and go back inside on them. Well, they shifted a little wrong there, moved a little too quickly. It'll be first down at 15. Same thing happened to Texas in their own territory. Had a first down out near midfield, and they had a five-yard penalty, and now the Aggies are going to have five yards stepped off against them, taking it back to midfield. First down, 15. There's four games now that we've done with the Aggies this year. Two of those games, Jim, they had over 100 yards and penalties in the first half. One against Alabama, which we thought, and even they thought that they could have won the ball game, had an offense for those offensive penalties, and then against SMU. Shea Walker, the man to the left now. Nelson goes in motion to the right. And on first and 15, Murray is harassed but runs out of the pocket. And this fella can run, and boy, is he put down. That was Britt Hager, the middle linebacker, number 60, chasing him and putting him down after a gain of only a yard, second down and 14. Jim Hager ends up, ends up chasing Murray here, but watch on both sides. The protection breaks down on both sides of the scrimmage. Matt Wilson came out to the outside to block an end, and then here comes Hager on the backside to make the tackle for no gain. Rod Harris comes in. They take out the back Keith Woodside. So there are three wide receivers in there now on second down and 15. And they've got them all stacked. And now Murray is mad because when he comes up, he sees something that he doesn't think is right for that formation and has to call a valuable timeout. 7-18 to go just in the first quarter. No threat yet. No scores yet here at Kyle Field.
We're not a company, but we recognize potential. We develop it. We use it. We'll make sure that as your responsibility grows, so will you. As your ability for leadership grows, so will you. Working with us, you'll gain self-confidence. Become a person with a future. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Marines, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. There's a new truck on the road. It's called Comanche. It's built by Jeep. It's worth a look. Now there are special factory-to-dealer incentives on selected Jeep vehicles and Eagle. In the game for the Cotton Bowl, second down 15 for the Aggies. Murray being chased. Murray gets the ball away, and it's a good thing that was not intercepted. Intended for Nelson over at the 41-yard line, but there was double coverage there as Earl Jeffries, a nickel back, was the man in front of the ball. And it had been a little bit less steam on the ball, or a little bit higher, and I think Jeffries would have had a touchdown. All right, here comes Nelson downfield now, Jim. Now watch, they're, they're picking him up short and long. They're not worrying about him short. The ball is there. The problem was, that's Jeffries, number one, that came in the game. But the problem is that Murray never had a chance to set to throw the football. Now it is third down and 15 to go. Both wide receivers are two wide receivers to the left and one to the right. Aggie's showing us a lot of different passing formations, and Murray again under pressure and throws, and the ball is off the hands of the intended receiver, Nelson, and almost picked off by Longhorn. And now the Aggies will have to kick the ball back to the Longhorns of Texas. And on comes Todd Schantz for his first kick. You give all the credit that time to that defensive line because you take a look at this defensive line, and I'm talking about moving steel hammer is going to be in there number 77 they're just forcing Murray out of the pocket and when that happens Llewellyn number 93 was there also shots kicks a very poor kick away and it was taken by the up man and that is Eric Metcalf son of Terry Metcalf and the ball will be down at the 23 yard line 658 to go thus far a battle of defenses Saturday night we've got a short night tonight Paul and I'll get up early in the morning or as a matter of fact start our journey tonight and wind up in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where Oklahoma is going to the Orange Bowl and Oklahoma State to the Gator Bowl, and where they're wondering whether Pat Jones is going to Pittsburgh. But we'll be there at 7.30 Eastern time. Those of you along the Eastern Seaboard, except New York, will watch West Virginia and Syracuse. Wayne Asbury's replaced Darrell Austin, who's got that bad foot at left cornerback for the Aggies. First down, Longhorns. Second man. And that is Hunter being dragged down by Ron Sadler. Rod Sadler, the junior, out of Decatur, Georgia. They got a good front three, this Aggie football team, and they're all young. And they all work so well together. Muller and O'Brien and Sadler, when you see the back have to move back in the backfield instead of going directly at the hole, that was because of Sammy O'Brien got penetration over the center. There's a battle in the, front, in the, in the middle there between O'Brien and Chilton. Only two seniors on the Aggie starting defensive unit. Well, Hunter is sure getting his chance to run the ball tonight, and Sammy O'Brien is making his presence known in the battle with Gene Shilton, the center of Texas. Jim, on that play there, Sammy O'Brien, watch what he does now with Chilton. He's going to set him up straight up in the air like that. He's getting double teamed by Chester. Now watch what happens. He gets away from Chilton, gets away from Chester, gets back in and makes the play. That's sensational. Third down and eight to go. Texas, no score. Ball at their own 25. But that was the catalyst for the Longhorns' comeback in the last half of the season. Dropping straight back, he rarely does that. Fires the ball, is picked off. That is Johnny Holland, the All-American. And the linebacker has the first turnover of the game, and the ball is inside the 20-yard line. Johnny Holland, all he did was read the quarterback size because Stafford, when he dropped straight back, the reason why I told you, they like to roll him out. Because when he dropped straight back, all the linebacker did was stand there and take a look at his eyes. Now watch where Stafford's looking. He's looking at the man all the way, throws, Johnny Holland gets in front, makes the interception, and now Texas A&M has the ball inside the 20. And William Harris, the tight end, is the man who came up empty as Holland cut in front of him. First good field position of the night for either team with 54 seconds to go in the first quarter. 
And there is no score, of course. Well, when you see this thing again, Jim, take a look at Safford. He is looking at his tight end the entire way. When he does that, it was William Harris, 95. Holland just steps in. And Sadler said, how do you do a knock Stafford down? And Paul on the field, the officials are talking with the sideline and about what I know not. Now, apparently a clock problem. Our clock shows 54 seconds to go. But something is going awry with the clock, and that's why they've taken this time out. Well, Paul, we have seen nothing of a defense tonight. We've seen a good rush by the Texas defense, and we've seen containment by the Aggie defense. And now we've seen the first turnover that could set up a score. And the man that made it all possible is Johnny Holland. It, you know, the defense, we talked about an improved football team. Defensively, this team, Texas A&M, they have a tremendous amount of confidence in the three down people. Sammy O'Brien, Muller, and, and, and Sadler, because they know that these, those three guys are going to get some heat on some players. Now we've got Johnson in the backfield offensively, and we got Vic in the backfield offensively. They're talking upstairs, trying to get the clock problem settled. Rob Bernstein has gone in. He is a tight end and a good pass catcher for Texas A&M. He will wear the number 29. And that's the situation. No score, 54 seconds to go. Well, while they take this time out, why don't we take a time out? It's Thanksgiving Day. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. This is the race for the Cotton Bowl, and it's up for Hill. Wherever you find pros in action, you'll find the Canon AE-1 program in action. The AE-1 program, so advanced in the hands of a pro photographer, it captures the winning shots. And so simple, it helps anyone shoot like a pro. The Canon AE-1 program, so advanced it's simple. Monday, the cheering never stops on ESPN. NFL Films presents three of the league's most successful players. Bart Starr and Roger Starbuck team up with broadcasting giant Frank Gifford. Then our exclusive preview of the Chicago-Miami Monday night matchup. The Dolphins are in for a fridge full of trouble if they treat this like just another game. And the Golden State Bombers and the Hollywood Hawks promise quite a show in Tinseltown. This stuff is absolutely outrageous. Roller Derby and Football Monday. This place is sold out, Kyle Field, where the Aggies are on their way back to national prominence and are in a fight now with a team that's been nationally prominent for years, Texas, for the Cotton Bowl. Harry Johnson, 21, Roger Vick, 43, are the running backs now for the Aggies. First down from the right team, Nelson wide to the right. They give the ball to Vick, and Vick gets a couple of tough yards, and that is about all. Stood up there by Blake Brauner, number 85, the senior right defensive end. Jackie Sherrill, by the way, happy birthday today. The last time that the Aggies and Texas met with the Cotton Bowl at stake was three days before Jackie Sherrill was born back in 1943. <laughs> but it's been a long time. Walker and Nelson both wide to the right. And Harry Johnson, the freshman running back, did not set up properly, but they got time to get the playoff. On second. Oh, he's lost the football, and Texas has it back. Now it is still up for grabs, and Texas gets it back a second time. Dulavon looks like number 39. Johnson fumbled it, had a chance to get it back. Allard comes out with it, although I thought I saw Dulavon get on it first. In any event, it belongs to Texas. Didn't Dulavon have the first shot at it? All right, here's the, the toss for Murray. Just never gets there, Jim. Here's the toss in the backfield, and that to Johnson. He misses the ball. There's Chris Dulabon. The ball hits him in the hands. Murray goes for the ball. Uh, Dulabon went after it again, but Ty Allard, number 48, is the man that comes up with it. Turnovers for Texas, 23. Lost 28, minus 5. AM is plus 3, and the clock shows 4.57 to go now. We were saying 57 seconds, but there was a lot of problems with that clock. Now looking to get outside is Hunter. That's one on one right there. Fine play by number 30, the right cornerback, Alex Morris, a freshman out of Arlington, Texas. 
But he gets the ball out to the 33-yard line, second down and eight. And Paul, we were saying 57 seconds to go. There's now four and a half minutes to go, so there was a big problem with that clock. All right, and another thing, too, when you watch, when we watch that last play with Hunter, and this is what's happening, they, they're not able to run Texas, they're not able to run the ball up into the middle of the field against Texas A&M, and it's taken too long to get to the outside. Stafford being pursued, coming over to throw, gets the ball up in the air, and the closest man to it was Wilcox, and the next closest man to it was James Flowers. Both of those are Aggie men. It was Kelm who was pressuring Stafford, the inside linebacker, number 65, and now it is third down and eight to go in the scoreless first quarter. And I can promise you Stafford just threw the ball away. Here it comes, Domingo Bryant, number six is there. They're pursuing from the outside. Calm, you're going to see him come into the picture, but Domingo Bryant hits him, but the ball was thrown downfield and what an indirection. I, I'm the one that told you it was Calm. I'm sorry, <laughs> that was my fault. Third down and eight. And straight ahead, looking for the first down. The first time he's carried the ball is Darren North, and he's got more than enough Good. as he's dragged down by Alex Morris. First time Darren Norris, the freshman fullback, has carried the ball tonight, and he gets more than enough. Now, I made a statement that they have not, Texas, they've not been able to run the ball up the middle, Jim. And here's the draw play. Now, watch what happens with the draw. Now, they're looking pass rush, first of all. The linemen let the, the defensive line take their splits and go outside. And when that happens, here comes Norris up the middle. Morris, number 30, comes in and makes the tackle. But they're at the 40-yard line. Hayes goes wide to the left. Gay is to the right. Same two backs in there, Norris and Hunter. We've not seen any other in the Texas backfield. And this is Hunter carrying the ball, and he gets up the middle. Dragged down by Johnny Holland, along with Kip Corrington, the free safety. A reminder again, Darrell Austin, they found that a senior, the senior left cornerback had ankle problems, then a broken foot. He started tonight's game, but Wayne Asbury has taken over at the left corner for him, number 16. Here's Johnny Holland. Now, let's just take a look at Johnny. Look at the play. He sees the cross action. Now he come back, comes back to make the play. This is an eight-yard gain by Hunter, but at least Johnny Holland got to the play late. Ball at the 33, second down two, no score, three minutes to go, first quarter. Stafford and Hunter's got no place to go. It's going to be third down and short. Lots of folks there to stack him up, led by Todd Howard, 73, the outside linebacker on that side. And Muller and Holland. In with the play comes Tim McRae, a tight end. It is third down and about two. On the 33, Edwin Simmons makes his first appearance. You won't be able to miss him. He's big, 6'4", 230, and he does not have the football. Stafford does and throws the ball out there, and it is caught and knocked out of bounds as Hunter out of the backfield. It'll be first down and goal to go at the five as everybody went for Simmons except Stafford who found Hunter loose along the sidelines. Jim, they had three people in the backfield and everybody's worried about Edward Simmons. There, there's the fake, Stafford comes to the outside. Now look, you're gonna see two people in line right there. When that ball is thrown up in the air, Harris, the tight end, almost knocked the ball away from Hunter. The ball was being thrown to Hunter and not to Harris. And the Aggies have called timeout again. That is their second in this, the first quarter. Moments ago, Johnny Holland intercepted a pass. It was first down Aggies at the Texas 19. But then Johnson fumbled the ball. And the Longhorns have put together a fine drive. And they're now first and goal to go at the A&M four-yard line. Saturday night, Paul and I will be, most of you will see Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Two bowl-bound teams starting at 7.30 Eastern time, and some of you along the East Coast will see West Virginia and Syracuse. We're splitting it up for the first time ever on ESPN. Jackie Sherrill, boy, what a turnaround this has been for him. The elation of first down at the 19, the dejection of Texas first down at the 4. And, of course, on the other side of the field, the Longhorns and their fans have had the same kinds of ups and downs. Two and turnovers, one apiece. And I don't think what the Texas will throw the ball down here. I don't think so either, but Edwin Simmons has come in, and just his size prevented everybody from taking a look at mining their own store because they all went for Simmons and left Hunter all by himself. And as you said, Paul, two men were out there that could have caught the ball. Not much. 
Brooks there for Hunter. And Larry Kelm is the man who puts him down. So it is second down. Aggies very tough here. They may run four times, or likely three times, and then try a field goal if they must. But it's tough to run against the Aggies down here. Domingo Bryant is coming back in. Morris is coming back in. In the defensive backfield, they're taking out Hazel Jackson, a reserve linebacker, and Dana Batiste. Thinking perhaps Texas will put it up. Simmons with the ball for the first time. Simmons gets down to about the two and a half yard line and has stopped there. And again, it is Corrington, the free safety coming up, number 10. He's a college station player. Raised here, went to school here that we have seen save AM against SMU and Arkansas in the late going. Look at Edwin Simmons. Now he's 6'4, 235 pounds, a leg drive, but they close fast. And when they close it, that Kelm number 65 is one of the men there. I go uh, right back to, to Edwin again. Third down from the two. Simmons with the ball. And did he get in or no. not? They say no. Decision time for Akers. It is fourth down and inches to go only. Take the three or figure your big man Simmons can take it in. That's, I think that's 53 Jackson. Here comes Simmons. The same play again right up the middle. And just look at them. They stuff him right at the goal line. Here they come again. This from the side. And he does not score. You can see it right there. He has stopped. Never makes it to the goal line. They're going. This is going on fourth down. Simmons again. No, no. He does not get it. He has stood up. And that is James Flowers, a cornerback, that hit him low. Flowers was there, Jim. But there had to be a great surge in the middle of the line. And I got to think it's got to be Sammy O'Brien. Muller and Sandler ends up on the play. And it's a big gamble. But just when you take a look at the middle, they just took Chilton the center, and he comes flying back. Watch here. There's just no place to go. They're coming in up over the top. But underneath, the thing was jammed by Sammy O'Brien, number 90, and there was just no place for Edwin Simmons to go. There they come again. Look at up in the middle of the pound. Muller was there. That team's fighting, man. Edwin Simmons, 234 pounds, carrying the ball three times and does not get it. Anthony Tony takes it out to about the five and is knocked back by Texas's defense. Led by Mike January. They were concerned about Mike, a backup linebacker, playing tonight because of a calf injury, but he was certainly in on that tackle, number 28. And we're running down to the end of the first quarter. First quarter is over. And Texas A&M has had the goal line stand. Texas and Texas A&M scored us at Meet Babe Ruth in person in your home. I'm proud of that bat because it represents the bat I hit my 60 home runs with. ESPN presents a sports classic. Meet Babe Ruth, a half-hour home video cassette collectible. Incredible highlights from the life of the fabulous Babe, exclusively for ESPN viewers. The Babe Ruth you haven't seen before. Spring training with Lou Gehrig. A sad twilight of his career as a coach with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Meet Babe Ruth, a home video cassette exclusively for ESPN viewers. The perfect gift at $14.95 for any occasion. Meet Babe Ruth. To order your exclusive Meet the Babe video cassette, call 1-800-222-2990. That's 1-800-222-2990. All major credit cards accepted. When it's icy cold and the wires are down and they're spitting sparks all over the ground, you gotta go, can't fool around. That's why America goes with Prestone. A fresh fill of Prestone 2 antifreeze fights freeze up and rust up too. A radiator could look this bad after just 10,000 miles of driving on weak, neglected antifreeze, while the Prestone radiator looks this good. Get the Prestone difference. America goes and goes and goes with Prestone. There's a time when others make decisions for you. This one. Later on, you make your own decisions. Now, many of you are being asked to make an important one. If you don't choose a long-distance company, one will be chosen for you. And it might not be the right one for you. So if the AT&T services you've always counted on are important to you, be sure to mail in the ballot you'll be receiving. 
This one, please. There's one way to be sure the right choice is made. Make it yourself. AT&T, the right choice. That's the Aggies' yell leader, and he's telling us, folks, to put it on Texas A&M Sway. That is not a wave. That's a sway. Watch that long enough, and you go for the seasick bills. <laughs> Second down as we go back to the field. Aggies with the football. Tony carrying the ball. Flag down on the play. Check that. That's Roger Vick. When they stand up to do that swing and sway, five yards against Texas, they stand up right in front of Paul and me, and it's a little difficult to see. First quarter was a standoff on the scoreboard. Yeah, but just take a look at the yardies. And that, that was that long drive by University of Texas. They just moved the ball down the field and didn't score. Texas A&M had the ball, got it on the turnover, and gave it right back to Texas. They really not had the ball long enough to do anything with it. Oh, Bevo. Hello, Bevo. Give us your Bevo. Thank you. Hello, Bevo. Second down from the 10-yard line and two yards to go. A&M, Roger Vick, the one back set there. That is Vick, and he has got, well, I think he's got the two yards. Hanging on to him there was James McKinney, the defensive end, number 87. He's got to get over the 12-yard line to have that first down. Now, check that, Paul. I'm in the error. That's Thomas Aldridge, 97, not McKinney, 87. That's Ty Allert there, number 48. Outstanding linebacker, 11 sacks on the year. He's only second in total tackles as they're coming out for measurement, but he has 86 solo tackles before tonight, and that is 10 more than his closest competitor. Let's see whether or not the Aggies have a first down. It looks like they do by that much. We're at Kyle Field, and high over Kyle Field is a Goodyear blip. America up from Houston, Texas. All they do is follow 45 North, and they'd be here at the controls. Dr. Don McDuff from Anson, Texas, and guess where he went to school? University of Texas. We may just see the bench from the blimp. <laughs> the good, Aggies the score, we're allowed to lose the blimp. <laughs> first down. Quick pitch back. Keith Woodside carrying the ball for the first time outside. He's got the first down across the 30-yard line. Woodside bumped after he gets to the 35-yard line by Eric Jeffries. Woodside had an outstanding game against SMU, was used sparingly against Arkansas, and they just unveiled him tonight. Now, just look at the left-hand side of the line. They get the excellent block, and Wiley, number 58, super block, actually really didn't hit anybody, just got in the way of the defensive back, and here comes Woodside. One shoe missing, picks up the first down. Jeffries puts him down, but they're at the 30, almost the 38-yard line. Early second quarter, no score. Roger Vick this time. Vick. Again, Peavy misses the tackle, and he runs through the tackle of Dulabon. First down across midfield at the 48-yard line of Texas. For all of you people who are going Christmas shopping, you go into stores with revolving doors, well, watch Peavy. <laughs> After Vic hits him, you're going to see a revolving door. Here he comes. There he goes around the corner. Vic gets back into the play, gets downfield. That's excellent. Vic. Three carries, 17 yards, first down the Aggies. And this time, Woodside is put down on a fine play by James McKinney. McKinney, who grew up in Austin, Texas, home of the University of Texas. And that's a loss on the play of two yards, second down and 12 from midfield. For those of you who do not know, as Fred Akers encourages his team the winner will go to the cotton bowl the loser to the blue bonnet bowl will keep reminding for those who may be joining us walker and nelson stacked as wide receivers at the top of your screen as murray is under a deep rush and down he goes gee what a rush was put on there by the blitzing linebacker january the man we said they were afraid would not play tonight because of a calf injury and that takes the ball back inside the 40 and now it is third and a ton now january normally is an outside linebacker you watch him slide into the inside there was just no one there to pick him up the backs left the backfield they did not look in the middle January number 28 comes up the middle and makes a tackle. And remember, against Baylor last week and in other recent games, Texas has been blitzing more than usual. And they've been blitzing a lot tonight. It is third down and 24 from the 38-yard line. And here's Murray dumping it out here, and the ball is knocked away. 
trying to get the ball out to Woodside at about the 28-yard line. Check that to Roger Vick at the 28-yard line. And I believe McKinney is the guy that got his hand on the ball, number 87. In any event, it is fourth down and 24. This offensive line leaves just a little bit too soon on, on this screen. Now, you watch Dawson, 64, sliding to the outside. McKinney just gets his hands up. They never got to him. And so now Todd Shantz to kick the ball away. High, good hang time. No fair catch called for yet. And now the ball, I think, went off Metcalf, and let's see who gets it. Metcalf did not call for a fair catch. A big mistake. A big mistake for the freshman out of Arlington, Virginia. And down there quickly is Lane Polochek, a reserve nose guard. And another turnover, this time at the 12. Polacek is a man that, that, that gets it. I don't understand what Metcalf was doing here. Now watch. First of all, there's no fair catch. This ball is way up in the air. He knows he doesn't have time. And then he fights the ball. Instead of getting underneath the ball, Metcalf had a chance at it. But the ball comes out. Polacek gets the ball. It is now Texas A&M's ball. First down, another big break for the Aggies. Yep, man, and that is Anthony Tony. Does not get much. You can see Peavy there, Hager there. And it is second down. Jam on inside the 10. Excuse me, on the beginning of the last drive before the punt, they had tremendous success running outside on Texas because they're getting their guards out and down the field. You've got a feeling they've got to go back wide to the outside. Nelson and Walker, the wide receivers are both to the right. On second down from the nine-yard line, Murray is hit as he throws the ball, and the ball is not caught by Jeff Nelson. Jeffries to cover, but the ball is incomplete at the five, and it is third down from the nine. Jeff Nelson went into the middle. Jimmy was going to take Jeffries inside and then come on back out to the outside, and when he did that, he slipped and fell, got back up and almost made the catch. That's why he's shaking his head. He got in there. The ground was gone, but he got back up. Evan Murray, who leads the conference in passing, is two of seven for 15 yards. Third down on the eight-yard line. Scoreless ball game. Murray back to throw again. Murray throws out here for the catch, and it is good, and touchdown, Jeff Nelson. First score, the Aggies. Nine-yard touchdown pass. Jim, this is about as pretty a pickoff as, you, as you're ever going to see with Shea Walker. You're going to watch. Shea Walker might come underneath in your picture. You don't see him there. But they picked off Jeffries, and there's Nelson. Jeffries had to go around in order to get there. Franklin back in to add the extra point. The Aggies are on the scoreboard first in this race for the Cotton Club and the Cotton Bowl on January 1st. All right, here comes the play. You see Murray driving back. Great protection. Now you can see Shea on one side, Shea Walker on one side, and then Nelson there. Jeffries couldn't get there. Nelson goes for the ball. Offensive line doing the job. Just take a look at Doug Williams, 75. He's sitting in there, no problem at all. 11.20 to go in the half, 7-0 A&M. Betty Dorfman before the Nikon One Touch. Betty after the Nikon One Touch. The Parfit family before the Nikon One Touch. The Parfit family after. Mr. Dennis Pinkstaff before. Mr. Pinkstaff after. This is great. The new autofocus auto flash Nikon One Touch. It's so easy to use, it's given thousands of people something they've always wanted. Oh, the baby's a week old. Got any pictures? Pictures they can be proud of. I swear we've been to everything there is. Can't imagine anything the two of us can do. Through the years, you've never let me down. Volvo, the car built to get you through the years. And I'm so glad I stayed right here with you. Through the The CFA on ESPN is brought to you by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. By Nikon, we take the world's greatest pictures. 
and by Volvo, a car you can believe in. On the field, the legendary 12th man in the form of 11 men who formed the 12th man kickoff team, normally only at home. Scott Slater will kick it off, and everybody else, none of whom has a scholarship, will all race down and try to stop either Kevin Nelson or Eric Metcalf on the return. Now, there have been three turnovers, and the third one paid off for the Aggies and turned the tables for the moment on the Longhorns. 7-0, Texas A&M. After Metcalf, the freshman tried to field the punt and fumbled the ball at the 12. Later to kick off. Flag is down. Nelson takes the ball. Aggies could have been offside. Nelson goes down at the 15-yard line, but I think they'll have to kick it again. Although they're coming out on the field, there is a flag down, and there's no call, and Slater's going back to kick it again. But the Texas offensive team is out on the field. Let's see. Offside. A&M. And right. now, well, I think they'll all come back out again. Here's Wurzbach, Jim. <laughs> he's, he's a little stranger than fiction. Mark Wurzbach. Watch this. Number 21. They just go like crazy, and they find the ball. Get out of my way, because I got some work I got to do right here. And wham. They're in play. I tell you what, I saw the bonfire being lit last night on local Texas A&M television, and they talked about the fact they're going to do this again. They talked about the fact that we always isolated on Dennis Mudd, and Wurzbach was asked why they didn't isolate on him. He said, they can't pronounce my name. When we isolated on him, we can pronounce his name, and here's the scoring drive that has paid off after that uh, turnover by Metcalf. I think if you'd asked the 12th man, these guys would have been human torches for the bonfire. <laughs> By the way, at halftime, we have the bonfire for you. That'll be our Texas A&M segment. We'll also have the Texas marching band and our salute to the Longhorns who are down from Austin, Texas, looking for the Cotton Bowl. Now, here they come again. Jackie Sherrill sends them out. They'll kick off from the 35-yard line. Look at this. Is not this madness? They... 11 men on the 12th man squad also take the field waving those towels and they're waving them right now all aside from the kicker they're whooping it up now that's just for the 12th man the towel and they're all the people that are waving this team right here all right Nelson Metcalf now move out to about the six yard line anticipating a much shorter kick 11.15 to go in the half. Then he gets a pretty good kick there. Driving Nelson all the way back. It goes into the end zone and out of the end zone. <laughs> a following win there, and they'll bring the ball out to the 20. But Texas does pick up five yards on the penalty in that they would have had to start at the 15 had there not been a penalty. So now Brett Stafford will bring his people out and try to get something going. And you can see that Metcalf is staying in the game. As we told you, Murray leads the conference, but was two of seven before he threw that touchdown pass. Three of eight, 25 yards tonight. Remember we told you Metcalf is in. He can give them some outside speed, number two. And they give the ball to Metcalf right there. And that's Johnny Holland. That's got Metcalf, and down he goes. And that is a loss on the play of about four yards back to the 16-yard line. This is the pursuit of Johnny Holland. He said, what do he say? The sandwich is on the field, which so one wants to take it. Here comes Holland. He's going to take the sandwich. Watch this. Metcalf, he makes a mistake. He slows down. You've got to give credit to number 16, Asbury, who was out there on the outside. He's the man that made Metcalf slow down. When he did, Holland made the play. There is the AM. Aggies mascot, Reveille. They call it an American copy dog. Second down, Stafford on the handoff. And this is fumble. all fumble by Norris. And is picked up by the Aggies again. Is that Poynton again? A local boy who keeps making good every time we turn our cameras on him. The firm turnover for Texas. Don't make a mistake in a game like this. There's Kelm. And there's Holland. Here it comes. Johnny Holland hits, rips the ball out. The ball goes downfield. Corrington, number 10, is going to fall on it. Asbury was also with him. Number 16, either one of them could have had it. Winner goes to the Cotton Bowl, but mistakes like this can keep you out of the Cotton Bowl. 
Murray on the handoff, and straight ahead goes Roger Vick and gets inside the 30-yard line. And you can see Rocky Reed on top, the senior linebacker, or I should say defensive lineman out of Houston. Takes the ball inside the 30-yard line, nearly to the 28-yard line, second down and about seven to go. We've still got 10 minutes to go in this first half. It is 7-0, the Aggies. And they're trying to add to it. Roger Vick again. Caught in the backfield. Fine defensive play there by Ty Allard. They're all American possibility. Back to the 32 it goes, and it is third down and 10. Ty Allard makes the play, Jim. They're doing that lineup again where they use Webb as the tight end on the outside, along with Johnson, who is the back. Now, Webb does not come back to the inside and get Ty Allard. That was the problem. He's split out. He's in a slot position, but he's got to make that crack back to the inside. If they do that, it gives the back time to get to the outside. Third down and long with Nelson swinging out of the backfield. And Murray looking and Murray throwing, and there's the catch. But that's not good enough for a first down. Nelson makes yet another catch inside the 25-yard line. But it may give them some options. But I do believe that they're going to bring on their field goal kicker. This will be a 42 yards. Remember against SMU, 48 yards. And Eric Franklin won the game with that 1917. But he is erratic. He is not in the class of Jeff Ward of Texas. But he can step up in class with this 42-yarder. From 42 yards out, it is high enough, it is long enough, and it is no good. It is off to one side, and again, they've dodged the bullet. One turnover out of three. The Aggies have scored. The other two, the Longhorns have escaped. 8.46 to go as Franklin comes off the field. Franklin actually thinks he makes this. Now watch his reaction afterward. The ball is up high. It's up over the top of the goalpost. Now watch Franklin. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I got it. I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> Last year, an automotive writer said a Volvo Turbo could peel the skin off an Audi 5000S Turbo. What are they saying about our turbocharged Volvos this year? The Volvo 740 Turbo drives sharp. It shadows your every move. It's a mighty car with a proud bearing, ferocious might, immense charm. The 740 Turbo is a wonder, tickling the leading edge of the state of the art. The Volvo 740, still one of the world's great cars, regardless of price. Where you going, it's I'm glad you're here. <laughs> hey, how did the doors turn out? Oh, right. <laughs> no other beer is brewed and aged like exceptionally smooth Michelob. Where you're going, it's Michelob. Happy Thanksgiving to you all from Paul McGuire and yours truly, Jim Simpson, and all of the ESPN crew. 7 nothing, the Aggies. Second quarter, 8.46 to go. First down, Texas at the 25. And running with the ball is Edwin Simmons. And Edwin Simmons does not get much, maybe a yard or two. Sadler and Johnny Holland in on the stop. And in the backfield, Peter Pope. Texas has lost Jerome Johnson. They're back up to Darren Norris out with a knee. So Peter Pope is in there now replacing Norris. Chilton to Sammy O'Brien. Let's take a look at what happens. Here's Chilton. He's blocked. But he is getting double teamed by Chester. They're double teaming Sammy O'Brien. They get him out of there. But the linebackers are stepping up and helping out. Second down at about eight. Baffert, here's Edwin Simmons looking for running room and does not get that much. Holland is at the end of the line there. You can see O'Brien there, along with number 73, Todd Howard. And it'll be third down and nearly five to go from just over the 35-yard line. Jim, we showed you Chilton and Chester blocking double team and Sammy O'Brien. Even though he's not in the play and they're double teaming him, Sammy O'Brien's doing his job because that's going to free a linebacker to make the play. Everett Gay wide to the right. Third down and nearly five. Stafford back to throw. Stafford being pressured, going the wrong way. Gets the ball off, and it is caught. No, it is not caught at the 31-yard line. That was Everett Gay making a dive for it. Would not have been a first down in any event. And again, the Aggies have held. And again, Telchik is coming on to punt the ball away. Jim Sadler and, and Roper are all 
Paul chasing him. Now, Muller gets pushed away. Here comes Sadler after him, and a roper is going to come in the picture on the top side right there. And when that happens, and you're running for your life, man, you're looking for some help, and he didn't get any. Delchick, a fine kicker to kick the ball away to Jimmy Hawkins, who's a rather good kick returner. Ball is hanging there. Hawkins does not call for the fair catch at the 25-yard line and has very little way to go, does he? Gets across the 30, back to about the 32. 7-17 to go in the second quarter. 7-0 the Aggies in the race for the Cotton Bowl. I swear we've been through everything there is. Can't imagine anything the two of us can do. Volvo, the car built to get you through the years. And I'm so glad I stay right here with you through the years. Follow a rainbow, here's where it is. Sunlight and palm trees, happiness and friends, these are my eyes. American Paradise, the United States Virgin Islands. And old Skeets whooped that hawk and made him fly him back over and put him back in that yard. For college football, former Mississippi State lineman Jerry Clower. When I played football at Mississippi State, little did I know I'd go from this uniform to this uniform. But thanks mainly to my football scholarship, I got an education that will be valuable to me all of my life. College football. It's doing a lot of good. That's the Aggies version of Bevo and what he's going to look like after tonight. <laughs> this is a fun game to do. Murray back to throw on first down. Had the toe for the moment. Lost the ball. And they're going to say, I believe, that I think he was down and the ground caused the fumble. I do not think that was a fumble. And apparently that is the way they're going to rule. The ball did not jump out from his hands. Watch this on replay. Now, Doug Williams is on the right of your screen, and he's blocking on McKinney. McKinney is going to come around. He's the first guy that's, I think, that's going to get there. And then watch from the backside. That's where he gets hammered. He being Murray. Hager is the guy number 60 that hit him. A loss of 10 on the play, second down and 20. Tony, the lone setback. Murray back to throw from inside his own 15. Gets the ball out there, and the ball is caught by Shea Walker. And Shea Walker is put down by Stephen Braggs. But that's almost enough for a first down. It'll be third down and a yard to go. The ball just over the 40-yard line. Now, remember, Doug Williams is 300 pounds, and he is a good pass blocker. Here he is now, McKinney again. Watch Doug Williams. He's got McKinney eyeball, puts him face-to-face, -face, gets him where he wants him. Doug McKinney's not going anywhere, man. Evan Murray now 5 for 10, 49 yards and a touchdown. Third down, a yard to go. 6.28 to go. Second quarter, 7-0 the Aggies. During the full house backfield, and Tony has him up for the first down. Took quite a shot as he hit the line of scrimmage and bounces forward to the 43, and that's the first down the Aggies. Richard Peavy came up. Peavy has been hitting a lot of people tonight, but he has been knocked away from a lot of people tonight, I guarantee you. Peavy's going to have a headache before this one's over with. Watch Tony and Peavy collide through the hole. Johnson is watching. That's Peavy on the ground and hits him. Tony picks up the first down. Now the eye formation. Second man through does not get much, and that's a good play by Brian Espinosa. There on Keith Woodside. A loss on the play of a yard, and it is second down 11. I don't think those those quick draws like they just ran there with Woodside is going to work against Texas for the simple reason that this team is not that all that big. Here's Texas A&M plays 20 rushing. They're doing it right about where they want to be. But what I'm saying, that Texas defense, Jim, they are so quick. They can get to the hole, get around their blockers and get to the hole. Everybody lined up on the wrong side of the field. Nickel defense, Eric Jeffries checks in the Texas backfield, and that's the third and final timeout taken by the Aggies in this first half with 5.36 to go. They've used them all. 7-0, Texas A&M leads Texas. 
And when we come back, it is second down, 11, the Aggies. Unlike Ponce de Leon, your search may be for that lost half step and sudden burst of speed, for better hip rotation and that extra five yards, for that missing piece of equipment to complete your home gym, or just for flexibility in those long-awaited leisure years. A regular power stretch exercise workout can make you more flexible, improve muscle tone, and even take off a few inches no matter what your age. And power stretch is safe, controlled, and easy to use. Power stretch. It just may be the world's finest exercise platform. And it's the gift that stretches from one Christmas to the next. To order your fully assembled power stretcher for guaranteed Christmas delivery, call 1-800-368-2224. That's 1-800-368-2224. For your free brochure, call 1-800-227-3800. Hi, everyone. I'm Tom Means in the Sports Center Newsroom. Hope you're enjoying our action from Texas A&M as the Aggies of the Texas Longhorns go at it for the bid of the Cotton Bowl from the Southwest Conference. Because of time considerations, we're going to move ahead in the second quarter action. The score is still Texas 0 and Texas A&M 7. Enjoy the rest of the game. At time, all of the day's news from Sports Center. The special feature, the bonfires lighted last night here in College Station Plus, live the University of Texas Longhorn Marching Band. That's our halftime for you. It is third down. The Aggie crowd comes alive, trying to kind of mess up Stafford with a snap count. And he's saying to the official, I can't hear. But he knew that when he came in here. And the official, Joe Thomas, is going to step in, saying it is my timeout. And a re-huddle on third down. Akers tells him what to do, sends him back out. You know, this is all going to start all over again, and they can keep doing this. Sure, look at what Texas has been doing. 75% of their plays have been rushing the ball, only 25% passing. Not that much difference. And M64. Now look at tonight. You like that? Tonight? Much different. Well, the crowd will go at it again. Third and long, remember, from the 45 of Texas. That was just hands on hips. They have not started the play clock, so they're giving them all the time in the world. Stafford is going to fall down, now get up. Gets the ball out here and throws it for his tight end who drops the ball when two men hit him. Johnny Holland. And James Flowers hit William Harris, and he couldn't hold on to the ball. And they'll have to kick it away. All right, Stafford, when he, he went to throw a quick slant pass to the wide receiver, Jim, which is a split in on that side. He wasn't open. Now, here comes Harris. He's blocking at the line of scrimmage. He's really not in the pattern. But all of a sudden, he sees Stafford in trouble. Now he's waving his arm. The smart thing to do, the ball is almost there. He's waiting on the ball, and then goodbye, because he's going to get hammered by Flowers. Belchick on two punts has averaged 52 yards. And this one drives Jimmy Hawkins back in near the sidelines. And it goes out of bounds inside the 10 at the 8. That won't hurt his average either. And that will put the Aggies in the hole inside their own 10-yard line. With 2.07 to go. Nelson on a 10-yard pass from Murray after a turnover when Eric Metcalf tried to field a punt with everybody down on him is the only score of this game. Aggies have turned the ball over once, and Texas has turned it over three times. One of them really hurt. That's the only touchdown. You're looking down from the blimp, and that is the Goodyear Blimp America, up from Houston, Texas, just down the road. As we told you, Don McDuff, who's a graduate of Texas, is at the controls. He is from Anson. Appreciate the pictures, Captain. And crew looks good. And that is Dick getting up almost for first down. May have the first down at the 19-yard line. I wouldn't say that the officials are excited, but as they went down to the field, they had fourth down up, and it was first down for A&M. They're not going to make any mistakes here. All right, just take a look at that's McGuire. That's McGuire number 61 getting the great block at the line of scrimmage. Okay. 
but Clark he's goes in there at center. Flag is down. Vic, good play there. As you can see by Mark Petkovich, reserve middle linebacker. But a flag went down before the play got off. 1.48 to go, 7 nothing. Good halftime show, and remember, we don't want you to forget, and we won't let you forget. We keep reminding ourselves. This is for the Cotton Bowl. Ball, ball star, offense, first down. With the loser going to the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Now, we didn't think it, uh, against Arkansas that they would put the ball up, but you have to understand, there's a minute and 46 seconds in counting now. You can see the clock in there. Texas A&M, remember, will get the ball in the second half, so they just don't want to make a mistake here. I'll, I'll be surprised if they put it up. Well, they put Braggs out here one-on-one, -on -one, thinking that they would run, and they did run. McKinney takes care of Vic, and it is going to be second down and 13. Ball at the 16-yard line, and clock for some reason has stopped and they've taken time out Texas A&M has used all of theirs but of course the Longhorns would like to get the ball back one more time with some time left on the clock when it does run out Sports Center will be on and we'll have the lighting of the bonfire last night some of the old Texas Aggie heroes some of the present Texas Aggie heroes at the 55 foot bonfire and of course we'll have the University of Texas marching band on also Red Acres can't believe that they're saying that he could be in trouble, but people in Texas know more about that than Paul and I do. But this is what he's done in eight seasons. A couple of Southwestern Conference titles, a couple of Cotton Bowls. There's something else about Acres. He has been to eight straight bowl games. That's not bad. I don't know what you have to do to keep a job. <laughs> and, 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 you know, especially, again, talk about the beginning. But this man did with this football team this year. I mean, they were picked on the bottom. Not many people gave them a lot of hope, but Mr. Fred Akers, you've done a pretty good job with this football team. And all you have to do is leave him alone. <laughs> He'll be fine. Letter should be addressed to Mr. Paul McGuire. That's right. There is Nelson, and they'll keep the ball on the ground. Dick trying to get some running room, hold on to the ball. Dulabon's got him. And that's going to let the time run down even more. Well, Texas, they're going to take another timeout now. That's their last timeout. And you know they're going to run the ball again, then kick the ball away again. But the Longhorns may have a chance to get something going here. We have seen a lot of Texas A&M this year. We did the Alabama game, 105 yards and penalties there. They could have won that. And then they went on a winning streak. Northeast Louisiana, Tulsa, Texas Tech, Houston. Then they lost to Baylor, and for a while they thought that might be it in the conference, but they beat Rice. They were underdogs to SMU and beat them on the Franklin field goal. They were underdogs to Arkansas and beat them. They rolled over TCU, and now they're here for the Cotton Bowl. Jim, that Baylor game, they just could not put the ball in the end zone. They were up and down the field against Baylor and couldn't get the thing in the end zone. Evan Murray got hurt in the Arkansas State game last year as a sophomore after being the newcomer of the year the year before and was given a red shirt year medical red shirt and so he is now a sophomore which means he's got two more years six of 13 69 yards and the only score of the game situation is third down and 10 from the 19 yard line Anthony Tony, well, that's a surprise. They pitched the ball to him, which could have been a mistake there, but he got away with it, and now they will kick it away. Yeah, that's they think hand it to him you instead bet. of pitch it to him. Walk it back and put it in his gut instead of throwing that ball away. They already had one fumble on a bad toss, and it is cold. And even in the situation like here, Jim, where the ball is at the 18-yard line, they're rushing on the field to kick the ball. I'd let, I'd even take the penalty here. It won't make that much difference. You're going to kick from the goal line uh, if you take a penalty. Take as much time off the clock as you can. Don't give them any. Now they're going to kick it. Jones. Now Metcalf, wow, drives him back. Would like to get in field goal range at least 25 seconds to go. Metcalf wants to get out of bounds, but not there. But he couldn't turn it upfield because the coverage by... The Aggies was good, so they've got the ball on a 33-yard line with 22 seconds to go and trailing 7-0. There's a situation where Metcalf didn't think Shots was going to get the ball there. Now watch this. Watch Shots. 
It's the ball, the center of the ball, and his head down the entire time, and that foot up, uh, that's beautiful kick, and he just drove it out of there. Well, Sean should know they've been comparing him with Telchik, who is an all-Southwest Conference punter, and they've been comparing Eric Franklin to Jeff Ward, who had another chance tonight, the all-Southwest Conference place kicker. Well, Johnson's passed the test. Franklin missed a 42-yard field goal. Well, 22 seconds, and you can watch the Texas Aggie bonfire and get warmed by it. And get all the scores of today. All down the sidelines, that is Metcalf, and Metcalf is right down to about the 47-yard line with 14 seconds to go. And he got out of bounds, so that stops it. Now, there's the man we're talking about. That is Jet Ward. And Metcalf just went down went down the sidelines. They just released him. They were worried about the wide receivers, and they didn't pay any attention to Metcalf. Here he comes out of the backfield. Now, watch. When he clears right here, they just let him go. That's a linebacker. Metcalf, Calm was trying to get there. He can't. Uh-oh, drop the football. All kinds of flags go down. Clock shows no time left, and if it's an offensive foul, this half is over. If it's a defensive penalty, then they got to play. Samuel Bryant said it's offense. But the question, well, the clock was running. There we go. Belongs to them. Therefore, they should declare this half over. At least according to the clock, the clock shows nothing left. But then again, they have had trouble with the clock before. 14 seconds when he started. Have a dead ball. Long start. Offense. There were two seconds on the clock. The clock. Okay. Wait, now, I'll, I'll tell you, they're arguing now because what you want to do is, to, Flower says, I want the penalty. Here it comes. They said there was two seconds on the clock. There's movement. The center picks his arm. The left guard is the man that moves, and that's Jaton. But that is the end. Of the, the clock is going to stop start anyway. Well, look at Akers is not happy about this. Let's get in the locker room and talk this thing over. All right, one touchdown pass. Kevin Murray to Jeff Nelson. After a turnover, the only score of the game. They're in the race for the Cotton Bowl. They've got 30 more minutes to play. In the meantime, we've got a great halftime show coming up. 7-0, the Aggies at halftime. Data General asks, are you buying yesterday's technology? Data General, computer systems so advanced, we win more major contracts than any other company. Data General. Where you going, it's Nick alone. This is it, opening night. Brian, party of two? You're on your way to the top. It was just great. No other beer is brewed and aged like exceptionally smooth Michelob. Table for two? Oh, that'll be about 45 minutes. <laughs> <sighs> we did it. Where you're going, it's Michelob. Tuesday, join ESPN for a colossal college basketball showdown. Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers meet Digger Phelps and his Fighting Irish live Tuesday. And welcome back to the Kyle Field College Station, Texas. We're in the race for the Cotton Bowl. It's 7-0, the Aggies lead. And on the field right now, the show band of the Southwest, directed by Glenn Richter. That is the University of Texas Longhorn Band.
capacity crowd, the pageantry of collegiate football, a great Southwest Conference game with the Cotton Bowl at stake, as you all well know. 7-0, the Aggies. We'll have the opening kickoff in a moment, but now let's learn something more about Texas A&M. Texas A&M University. When you ask former students for money or support, they appreciate the opportunity to do something for A&M. Has made a difference. There's no doubt in my mind, and I try to get that idea across to everybody I bump up against, that A&M is the best. To people who make a difference. The most critical and important years of my life that really changed and put me on a course were my years at Texas A&M. To all of us. Sports Illustrated wanted me to talk to you sports fans out there, and also to you people who love them. Christmas is coming, and if there's someone on your list who's interested in sports, give them Sports Illustrated. You fans know I'm big on sports. On the other hand, I'm also sensitive, warm, caring, kind of a teddy bear with muscles. So you folks can trust me to help you find a great gift. You fans are going to love the week after week of action-packed coverage. Starting with the Sportsman of the Year, with the year in sports. Then you'll go to the bowl game, Super Bowl XX, the World Series, the NBA playoffs. But you don't have to go anywhere. Just call and order Sports Illustrated. And you'll get an attractive card you can sign and give to your fan. So call 1-800-621-7600. Then save 60% off a full year. That includes the baseball, football, and basketball previews, plus the swimsuit issue. All for $43.95, and you won't be billed till next year. So call now and make everybody happy this week. Setting off to find America. Gonna take my own sweet time to find America. Coda Color VR Films, capturing America in all its glorious colors. And everywhere I see people smiling back at me. So glad to be in America. Kodak Film, because time goes by. And now a chance to see the largest military band in the world out of Texas A&M. It is seven to nothing, and the Corps is on the field. will bring them to their feet. And here come the Aggies. They lead 7 0. And the Bevo Blues. Well, you know that is an Aggie sign there. And the Corps runs off as Texas runs on. And I think Paul McGuire, somewhere down in the vicinity of eastern Alabama, the Auburn fans and Auburn team are watching this one. They'll play the winner in the Cotton Bowl. Jim, when you look at these stats, look at the blue numbers. Texas, the turnovers, three of them. 
And the big, the key to the first half for Texas, one of the keys is that one long drive that they had, and they were stopped right at the goal line. Three turnovers for Texas, one for Texas A&M. Everything else, just about even. And the Aggies will get the ball to start the second half. They won the toss and elected to kick off. Looking down on Kyle Field, 4,000 more than capacity, they say, are here. Uh, they sure sound like they're more than 4,000 more than capacity. <laughs> The Southwest Conference title at stake, the Cotton Bowl at stake. The winner to face Auburn. Jackie Sherrill's trying to work the magic for the first time since 1968, and this is fourth year's head coach. And we'll repeat again, the first time since 1943 that Texas and Texas A&M, natural rivalries within this great state of Texas, are facing off for the title and for the Cotton Bowl. Last time, 1943. Here comes Fred Akers out onto the field. And literally, as the smoke clears from the cannon that was fired moments ago, we'll get the second half underway. Can have your attention, please. Some in oh, there's a young man again. Some individual statistics. Edwin Simmons gained 24 yards on seven carries. Norris, 42 on three carries. Hunter, 30 on 10 carries. He carried the ball more than anybody else. On the other side for the Aggies, Tony, 29 yards on eight carries. Vic, 34 yards on eight carries. Woodside, 20 on four carries. Passing, Stafford, two for eight. And one interception. Murray, six for 13 and one touchdown. And he was sacked twice. Texas trailing by seven to kick off to start the second half. And that'll be the first time that we have seen Jeff Ward today in a kickoff role. Remember, Ward kicked five field goals to beat Arkansas 15 to 13. He, like Telchik, the punter, Telchik, both all Southwest Conference. And I think in this second half, Jim, in order for Texas to win this football game, they're going to have to be able to throw the ball. Rod Harrison, the man in the deep, in the center for the Aggies. Well, in 30 minutes playing time, we'll know. This is Harris at the three. 15 and across the 20-yard line, and the Aggies will put it in play on about their own 23. Kevin Murray... The quarterback, number 14. They've used Woodside, 33, Tony, 25, Vic, 43, and Johnson, 21. It'll be Woodside and Tony to start the second half. Jeff Nelson caught the touchdown pass, number 8. Jay Walker, 85, the other wide receiver. Duncan Webb, 95, the tight end. Sheik and Williams, the tackles. Wiley and Dawson, the guards, and Wilson at center. First time a &M got the ball in the first half, they threw on first down. Nelson, and the man in motion, they're going to hand off this time, and that is Tony, and Tony almost gets the first down across the 30-yard line. It'll be second down and short. They just came off the line that time as quick as you can please. Here comes Tony. Just take a look at him. He's exploding right now. They get good blocks inside. Wilson blocked well, Dawson blocks well, and Doug Williams on the outside kicked out. Second down and two to go. Nelson doing a lot of emotioning tonight, and Tony, well, he bounces off one or two men, and now the gang tackled as he hits to the 35-yard line. He hit Steelhammer right at the line of scrimmage and got past him and picked up the first down. Steelhammer number 77, a senior out of El Paso playing the right tackle spot at the moment. And now you can see Rod Bernstein, the tight end number 29, check in. They love to throw to him. Doug Williams comes out, and Frank Case will take his place at right offensive tackle for the Aggies. On first down. Walker and Nelson both to the left. Murray to throw on first down. Puts it across the middle, and it is caught by Nelson, who was the man in motion, and Allard and Braggs put him down, but he's picked up about five to six yards. That is a dangerous pass because that time Murray stuck the ball in. There were three Texas defensive men there. and But Nelson, we know one thing. He will go across the middle and catch the ball. Here he comes there. Peavy's there. They're just sitting in there waiting. Braggs is sitting in there. That was a tough pass. Second down and four to go. Hey, Nelson only weighs 158 pounds. What are they doing to the man? 
And there's Tony carrying a tackler with him. And he's got the first down. But Britt Hager took him right with him. The sophomore middle linebacker out of Odessa. At the 46 now. First down. Steelhammer goes out at tackle and Reed comes back in on the right side for Texas. Tony again, trying again, and picks up four more yards. Rocky Reed, who just came in, is at the bottom of the pile. His number is 98. But they're eating him up. Ball. Sylvester Morgan comes in. He didn't play against Texas Christian last week because of a shoulder, but he's now in a tight end for the Aggies. Doug Williams has gone back in. Nelson goes wide right. Jay Walker to the left. 7 0 the Aggies. They've got the football. This time it's Woodside in motion. Tony cuts inside and has nothing there. Nothing at all. Loses a couple of yards. And it'll be third down and seven from the 49. Espinosa led the way for the tackles. Number 94. Great pursuit. Espinosa gets back to the outside. Hager's out there too. 60 the middle linebacker. You watch him. There's 84 or 94 Espinosa. Watch him come right down the line of scrimmage. He's sitting right there when Tony makes the cut. He's there. Hager comes in and finishes him off. Third down. Big play for the Texas defense. They got to get the football to score. Walker set up on the wrong side. Now it comes to the left side. Uh-oh. Now they moved and they're saying that the right side. Well, a defensive man went off. Morgan moved. The question is that the tight end can move as long as he's not set, but he can't move downfield. He can move left or right. Sylvester Morgan, the man we said did not play against TCU as the man that moved, but also the Texas defense moved. A lot of consultations tonight between Joe Thomas and his crew. And now what do we have? No flag. No flag. Replay the down. <laughs> See, the tight end can't move, and that's what they're looking at. The defensive man came across and got back. The tight end can move. Big man that can admit, admit that he shouldn't have thrown that flag. <laughs> Third down, Walker. Nope. It is Tony Thompson in now with Jeff Nelson wide to left. On third down and seven. And Murray back to throw. And Murray has the time. And Murray has Nelson out here for the first down. Nelson is across the 30. Nelson is down near the 21 yard line and knocked out of bounds there. First down, the Aggies. Nelson, they're bending over him, and he is a little slow in getting up. They're still looking down at Nelson on the sidelines. Jim, when Nelson ran inside and then back outside, there's Nelson down on the ground. They're going to bring the people there. Watch Bragg. If we could see Bragg's number six, he gets tied up with his own man. Here's Bragg's, and he slips down here. I thought he got tied up with his own man because his man went by him. And then Nelson is there. Bragg's is chasing. Nelson really gets hammered right there, coming out of bounds. That's PV number 42 to hit him. Now the quick handoff to Tony. Tony explodes down inside the 15 yard line to about the 14 yard line. Nelson was down along the sideline, six catches for 69 yards, as we said. He only weighs 158, and he took quite a pop there. Not a cigar Jackie Sherrill has there, that's a pen. It is second down and short. Texas digging in, they trail by seven. The Aggies on the move after the big play to Jeff Nelson. Tony hit at the line of scrimmage and then still goes forward for a yard or so. Third and short, Chris Dullivan, number 39, the linebacker on the weak side, made the initial hit. Jim, they always talk about key drives, key plays, key series. Every single drive is a key. Every play is a key to the game. But when you can take the second half kickoff and drive it down your opponent's throat and score, and you're already up 7-0, it really gets the defense to thinking. You're keeping your, your defense off the field, and your offense is moving the ball for a score. Tony's got the first down inside the 10, and they're still working on Jeff Nelson on the sidelines, now helping him up to his feet. He has been down all this time. They've run three plays, and Nelson is still on the sideline. All right, let's look at this offensive line now. They're just blowing people right off the line of scrimmage. Wilson, 50. Wiley, 58. Dawson, 64. They ran right up the middle. First down. Thompson wide to the right, the only man flanked really wide. That is Harris in motion to give the ball to Tony, and he is stuck right at the line of scrimmage. 
Britt Hager is there along with Steve Llewellyn. And mark the ball again at the nine yard line. Second down. Tony wants out of the game, He's raising his hand. Well, they're talking to well, Nelson on the sidelines now, Paul. He is walking back to the huddle. I think it. Uh, well, he's, oh, it looks to be okay, but he's staggering a little bit. Ron Bernstein has come in as a tight end. Second down. And a Murray. Murray over to the end of the zone, and Rod Harris. The freshman makes his first touchdown catch of his Aggie career. Jim. They brought Harris in motion, and then they broke him back to the outside, brought him to the inside in motion, and he ran him back out to the corner, and Murray threw a perfect strike. Akers talking on the sideline as Franklin comes in to add the extra point. And that is good, and the Aggies lead by 14 over Texas. Jim, this is just a perfect pass. On the left of the screen, that was Harris coming in motion. Now he's going to break back to the outside. Tillman, number 11, never had a chance. That ball was perfect. Murray is looking at him all the way. Watch where the ball is over his shoulder, right there. Tillman had good coverage. He was on Harris. Couldn't make the play. Right over Tillman. Murray now 9 of 16, 114 yards, but more importantly, two touchdowns. When people work, chances are they're wearing Dickies. It's the best-selling work set in America. And if you need coveralls, overalls, work gloves, socks, or shirts, footwear, headgear, underwear, or outerwear, they all have Dickies horseshoe label. Dickies are America's favorite work clothes. But who says you have to work in them? Dickies. Made with Salonese for Trell polyester. Introducing the G-Shock 5200 watch from Casio. The sports watch that's ready for action with a built-in shock absorber. It's tough, so tough, this G-Shock can take a slap in the face. And not even flinch. The G-Shock 5200, just one of Casio's water-resistant sports watches. It's one tough watch to beat. The CFA on ESPN is being brought to you by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. By BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. And by the financial professionals at Payne Weber Incorporated. The 12th man team, kickoff team, is on the field. The Aggies, for the moment, are in the driver's seat, leading by 14, but 9.28 to go, third quarter. But the Longhorns need some offense. They haven't had too much tonight. Ball is taken in the end zone by Metcalf. They'll start it at the 20-yard line, first and 10, Texas. Great part of that drive. They ran out five minutes and 32 seconds and score a touchdown. Jeff Nelson Hurt has 91 career catches, and that ties an Aggie record, and we hope we see him again. Here comes the kickoff team. That's Mud number four. Now watch what they do. That, they don't just hit other people. They hit their own people. Here, watch. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got to spend a day with those guys. I'll tell you, there's something else. All right, Hunter and Norris are the setbacks. Stafford remains a quarterback, sprinting out to throw, and is in trouble, gets away, puts the ball up for interception. It is intercepted. Off one man's hands into the hands of number 15, James Flowers. The fourth turnover for Texas, and the Longhorns now can be said to be in trouble.
Jim Stafford throws this ball way back into a crowd. Now watch. He's getting set up to throw right there. He can't throw the ball because he's being forced by Roper, number 83. Now when he throws, look where he throws back through, Jim. All the red shirts. The ball is tipped off the hands of Howard and into the hands of Flowers. And, and here we go. as we go live, he's got a first down down to the 11. Going all the way from the 27 to the 11, a pickup of 16 yards from Roger Vick. All right, Jim, here comes Vick, and he's coming to the right side of your screen. The blocking is there. No chance for Dulabon to tackle him, trying an arm tackle. Senegal is, is the guy that really picks him up. But what I was talking about on that pass play of Stafford, Jim, you just don't throw the ball all the way across the field into a crowd. Aggie score here, a long way to come back. That is Johnson motion, Vick straight ahead. Vick touchdown! Texas has given up no touchdown passes in the last three games. They've given up two tonight, and that's the first one on the ground. Vick from 11 yards out. It's 20 to nothing. And that'll make folks in Auburn, Alabama, sit up and take notice. This is a young, improving team. And Akers at a low point of this game. They'll need a lot of offense in the remaining 23 minutes and 52 seconds. And no mistakes. Franklin. Now remember, it is 21 to nothing, but two of the three touchdowns are a result of turnovers. All right, Jim, look at the blocking in the line is superb. They get it right in the middle of the field. They get excellent blocking up front. Vic just cuts it back, and he's in for the touchdown. I don't even know if he got touched going through there. But here it is. Just take a look at the blocking along the line of scrimmage. And he cuts right back into the inside. Sheik, number 79, didn't really have to get a block. He was going through for the linebacker who had already taken himself out of the play. That's touchdown. Seventh touchdown of the year for Vic rushing. Nine all together. 21 to nothing. He's lead. I'm Charles Schwab. Over one million investors who make their own investment decisions trade with us. Here are a few reasons why. Bill, I got some advice for you. It uh, won't help your golf game, but it'll do wonders for your wallet. I'm listening, Jay. I've been buying and selling stock through Charles Schwab. Schwab, he's a discount broker. Right, I've been saving 50, 60, sometimes over 70% on commissions. Well, I've heard of Schwab, but frankly, I've wondered what kind of service I might get from a discount broker. Schwab will surprise you. I've never had better service or faster trade executions anywhere. And of course, there's no sales pressure. Good, I hate sales calls and I like to save money. Schwab sounds like my kind of broker. For a free booklet on how you can save up to 76% on brokerage commissions, call 800-554-9000, toll free. That's 800-554-9000. Charles Schwab, the Bank America Company, member SIPC. Brett Stafford has been the man that has brought Texas back in the second half of the season, hitting over 70% of his passes since he became the starter, but three of nine tonight with two interceptions. There have been four turnovers, and two of those have led to Aggie touchdowns. It's 21 to nothing, and here comes that 12th man kickoff team again. Scott Slater will be the man to tee it up. Kevin Nelson and Eric Metcalf are deep. Nelson 32 on the left. And Metcalf number two on the right side of your screen. And that is Metcalf. At the two. The ten. And does not make it out to the 15-yard line. Almost to the 15, they'll give him. All right, Jim, this is Vic on a touchdown, but watch the hole open up in the middle of the field. There is the hole. When Vic, once Vic, Vic gets through, Espinosa got his arm on him, but that was the only man that touched him. That's touchdown. Stafford remains your quarterback as they come out of the huddle. Starting from the 14-yard line. And that is... Norris, and he doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. 
Darren really had a tough time trying to get his footing or deciding where to go. Yeah, that's because that everybody jammed it in Sammy O'Brien. Here he is now. He is on Chilton. Watch Sammy O'Brien take Chilton back into the backfield. He's the first man there. Takes Norris out of his pattern. Chilton's holding him. That's okay. Because they tackle him for a half-yard loss. There's Todd Dodge, who's replaced by Brett Stafford as quarterback earlier in the year. And now this is Stafford and O'Brien's on him. Now Chilton did not get O'Brien out of the way there. And Stafford is put down. And it's patting him on the head time. As you can see, Texas miscues tonight. Two fumbles, two interceptions. Result? One time they fumbled it right back. Then they got a touchdown, missed the field goal, and have gotten their second touchdown. So three opportunities really to score. And the Aggies took advantage of only two. Third down and ten to go. Stafford now is beginning to complain to the official Joe Thomas that he can't hear the snap count. Well, you heard Jim, we were talking Stafford on our opening show of our show to say that I know that Kyle Field is a tough place to play. And he is reinforcing that opinion. All right, we've been talking about Sammy O'Brien, Jim, in the last play. And I don't know if this was a, if this was a planned quarterback sneak or not, but watch Sammy O'Brien here. They just don't even block him. He just follows down. Stafford, I don't know whether he thought he could break it and go with it. Chester never blocked O'Brien. Chilton brought blocked down. And when that happened, there stood Sammy. Third down and ten. Well, a game that we thought would be close was close throughout the first half, seven to nothing. But here in the second half, one good drive by Texas A&M and one big turnover by Texas and a quick 14 points for the Aggies. Third and ten. Well, they're trying to get the crowd quiet and the band didn't help in anything either because they're still playing. They have not started the play clock. They will wait until he sets under there, and then they'll give him the 25 seconds to get it off. Well, Stafford's getting respect because they're starting to quiet down. Well, while Brett Stafford waits, we shall wait also. Tough thing for this young man out of Belton, Texas, a junior. He's brought him this far, but he's been intercepted twice and has not been able to move the team. Bob Dodge, as we said, along the sidelines, the man that Stafford replaced. But anybody that follows Texas football will tell you that Stafford is the catalyst. And right now, Stafford is the catalyst for a lot of discontent, and apparently he's just willing to stand there. And well, so I'll tell are the what, officials. Yeah, and it, they'll throw a flag against Texas A&M if they can't control this crowd. Usually at this time, a public address announcer will have advise him of that fact you think that Joe Thomas has that whistle in his mouth to blow in a hurry how much longer can they wait Paul it's some more than a minute now some of these guys may forget the snap count or the play that's called <laughs> they've had a lot of play there they come count. all of that and Morris blitzing from the cornerback spot puts him down number 30 it's fourth down, and their bond kicker, Telchik, will have to kick from his own end zone. That's why Morris was waving that little flag, Jim, to keep him quiet, because he came from the outside. He just blitzed from the left-hand side of the screen. No block was put on him. Hunter misses him, and there's Morris, number 30, and in the other safety, Domingo Bryant, they sent everybody. Jimmy Hawkins back near midfield. Telchik almost out of the end zone. This fella can kick him and does. Drives Hawkins back from midfield to the 41-yard line. Look out. Still on his feet. Still on his feet. All the way down to the 34-yard line of Texas. 6.39 to go, third quarter. 21 to nothing, the Aggies. Hello out there. Listen. How would you like to save some money and get something I'm absolutely sure you can use and enjoy right now, right where you are? It's TV Guide.
America's favorite television magazine, and here's the story. You call this toll-free number and take advantage of the special TV offer, and you get 30 weeks of TV Guide Home Delivered, and you get three months to pay, and you get the lowest price going, and that's a promise. Yes, right now, call 800-445-4500 for 30 weeks of TV Guide at the lowest price going. 30 weeks of TV Guide in your mailbox for pennies a day. And you can pay in three easy monthly installments of just $5.75 each. 800-445-4500. Send no money, but call today. 800-445-4500. TV Guide pays for the call. Call now. You'll be glad you did. 21 to nothing, the Aggies. Day after tomorrow, Paul and Avi in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Adding for the Orange Bowl against Oklahoma State going to the Gator Bowl. Those of you on the East Coast accepting New York City will see West Virginia and Syracuse. And of course, Syracuse is going to the Cherry Bowl against Maryland. And right now, folks, it looks as though the Aggies are going to the Cotton Bowl unless Texas can get something going. But it's first down the Aggies at the 34 of Texas. Rod Harris in motion and Tony carrying the ball down to about the 32-yard line. Anthony Tony. When 300 pounds lays up against you all afternoon long or all evening long, all of a sudden something has to give. Now, this is Doug Williams, 75. Watch this. He's blocking. He's blocking. And that's Cooper that he's flying against. He just drives him back into the middle of the field. Second down and eight to go. Murray having not a spectacular night, but two touchdown passes. He is not bad. Hitting him about 50% of his passes. Rod Thomas slips as he went out and so now Murray must scramble and there's nobody on this side of the field to throw to. Now the man comes over Harris. Touchdown! And a flag down and they may have roughed Murray which would be assessed on the kickoff. I think it might be Cooper that roughed Murray. But what a great job Kevin Murray did finding Harris coming across the field. First of all, as one wide receiver slip, slipped we down. We have a dead ball. Personal foul. Here, touchdown stand. Well, I tell you, Harris never caught a touchdown pass before in his freshman career. He's got two tonight. He called that, that personal foul against Murray the long, way he pointed. Long personal. Yeah, I think so. Here comes. There's Cooper chasing him to the outside. And Murray's going to find Harris coming across. Look at this. He led him perfectly on the run, out to the outside, touchdown. No chance for the defense to get there. Griffin couldn't get to him. Harris gets the touchdown, but the, the roughing came afterwards when Murray was on the ground. We shall see when they kick off. Here is that stack formation they use. Now they slot over for Franklin to attempt the extra point. And down it goes, and Franklin puts it up. He's not missed on those tonight. He has missed the 42-yard field goal. But this ball game now does not belong to Akers. It has been all the Aggies. Witness this play again. All right, you, you saw Harris go down. He, he went in motion, went down underneath. Now, watch the scrambling ability of Murray. The, the beauty of this thing is where he throws the ball on the run. Cooper is the one that, that hits him late, or Murray hits Cooper. We'll find out in a moment. But Harris is in the open. No chance for Griffin to cover him. That's touchdown. 5.52 left in the third quarter. And Harris gets the ball, as does Kevin Murray. Jim, this was against Murray. Now, Murray did something to Cooper when they were on the ground. It happened after the touchdown. So the touch I know, but the touchdown counted, but they're moving the ball. Texas A&M's going to have to kick off the 25-yard line. Well, it may be too little too late. Unless the Texas offense comes alive and has not shown much life yet tonight. As a matter of fact, remember at one time, Texas got the ball inside the five-yard line, and in four carries, AM took over. How quickly a game turns around. Seven-nothing game at halftime, two teams battling it out defensively, and all of a sudden, a couple of mistakes. One the interception, then they get it wasn't a mistake, they got sacked. They got sacked back and a great punt return by Thompson. And you're in position to score. I'll correct you one thing by Hawkins, the great punt. Hawkins, excuse me, Hawkins. Okay. I'm sorry. Here I comes Scott Slater coming up. 
to kick the ball off from the 25 after the personal foul assessed against Kevin Murray, the quarterback, who's just thrown his third touchdown pass. First to Nelson, the last two to Harris, and now that broke man team goes up to whoop it up again with those towels they've got. At the moment, you'd have to say, Auburn, stand by. You've got the Aggies and the Cotton Bowl on New Year's Day. If you don't, you've got a Texas team that will have pulled one of the great comebacks in the Southwest Conference this year or any year recently. Keep that ball along the ground so there'll be no real return there. The ball will go out of bounds. Now they've got to kick it from the 20-yard line. Well, they got almost 21 minutes to pull it out if, if they can. But I, it doesn't look... Now we've got They'll another flag. Again. And the Aggies are walking back clapping, so this must be against Texas. All those little people running down in the kickoff are aggravating the Texas players. <laughs> they get in your face. Well, it's a personal foul, and I think we have it for you to show you what happened. All right, here comes Mud coming downfield. Look at Mud. Well, and that's something. The last man well, to be pushed is the one that always gets caught. Right? I don't know why Mud picks on the big guys, though. That's Carter Hill, and I wouldn't do that. Lots of consultations tonight by Joe Thomas. Watch out. We got an illegal procedure. Oh. Kicking out of bounds on the kicking time. Be a five yard penalty. We got a dead ball personal foul against the kicking team. Oh. A dead ball personal oh, foul. Oh, they'll all set. Okay. Against the receiving team. They'll all set. Five yards and re kick. We're going to penalize them five more yards. We are watching the team that's going to the Cotton Bowl, and Saturday night, Paul and I will be watching a team that's going to the Orange Bowl, plus a team that's going to the Gator Bowl, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. And again, on the East Coast, except in New York City, West Virginia and Syracuse, the Jerry Bowl-bound team, will be your teams to watch at 7.30 Eastern time. Now they will kick off. From the 20-yard line, <laughs> 5.52 to go. And you'd think this is a personal challenge for the 12-man team. Jim, you know, normally in any any pro game, college game, when a kickoff team, when the kicker kicks the ball out of bounds, y'all look at him and say, hey, stupid, keep the ball in play. we got to run down on these kickoffs. Not these wackos. They, <laughs> they want to go down. They'd like to do this over and over and over again. They really enjoy it. And here they come again. <laughs> They're beautiful, man. These non-scholarship men that play only on this particular play, the kickoff. And they kick it low again, and this will not go out of bounds. It's going to be picked up by Metcalf. And Metcalf's going the other way, and is knocked down near the 30-yard line. And now we'll take a check at the sidelines and see whom Akers will send out here. Look at the Aggies over the last three games, Jim. It's just, it's just incredible. They've given, they have done so well. Brett Stafford, the man who got him here, is the man that's going to quarterback. Kevin hands off to his big man, Edwin Simmons, who gets out across the 35 at the 37-yard line. Edwin Simmons, four knee operations, had his best game of this year, last year, against Baylor. When Texas knocked Baylor out of the Cotton Bowl, Simmons had 90 yards. Edwin Simmons has to look down into the huddle. Well, I've got Donovan Pitts, a defensive back, lined up as a wide receiver, number 43. He's up on the top. There's Simmons trying to get outside, does get outside, and slips. But he's got the first down at the 45-yard line. 4.59, and counting in the third quarter, remember, in this 28-0 ball game. Well, we started, what, at 43 degrees at game time, and I think that thing has dropped about 10 degrees since then. First down, Texas from the 44-yard line. 
Get something here that can get back in the ball game a little bit. Shifting into the eye, and flags go down on that shift. Dead ball foul. That'll cost them five yards. It'll be first down and 15. Jim, I don't know that time if Stafford called an audible and whether the backs could hear it, and they moved, and it looked like Edwin Simmons didn't move fast enough to get back and get lined up. Takes the ball back to the 39-yard line, first and 15. First down. Penalties have not been a big thing. The Aggies with 34 more yards in penalties than has Texas. But there's been no critical penalty yet in the ball game. That's the one thing that Texas A&M they've corrected in the latter part of the season. It's made them a good football team, taking away some of those penalties, especially offensive penalties. Stafford on a straight back drop this time. Now running out, now throwing, and this man has caught the ball. And that's that big tight end again, William Harris. And he's got the first down inside the 35-yard line. Harris had only 11 catches before tonight, but has made a couple of beauties tonight. This is a nice throw for Stafford on a run. A great adjustment by him now. He goes back in the pocket. There's only the three-man rush coming now. And he looks and sees Sammy O'Brien on the outside and then steps up, gets his man Harris over the linebacker, Kelm, into Texas A&M territory at the 34-yard line or on a drive. Stafford four for 10, two interceptions. Dropping straight back again. And now in trouble again, running out again, shoveling the ball again, and down goes Big Edwin Simmons. As they're quick to the ball, the biggest in the first man there is Todd Howard, number 73. That time they ran it. the three-man rush plus the linebacker wet. And Sadler, we're taking a look at him now. He's on the top side, all right? And Stewart is the man blocking on him. Sadler throws him to the outside. Stewart stays with him pretty good. He gets back in, gets to Stafford, but it's too late. They get the ball out to Edward Simmons. He picks up five yards. Second and five. Everett Gay to the left. Oh, look at that. Darren Norris is absolutely stood up by Sadler, who's having an outstanding game, number 99. Sadler's at that whole front line, Muller, O'Brien, and Sadler, and watch Sadler come down the line of scrimmage. He's going to the inside on Stewart anyway. Watch this. Bang! Right into the hole. No place for Norris to go. Third down and five. 2.50 to go, third quarter, and Texas must get something going here. If they do, there's time. A little blitz. Gets the ball away. And that's that man again, William Harris. And Harris has got the first down down to the 20-yard line. Harris has caught yet another, the best and favorite receiver for Brett Stafford. He's caught most of the successful passes that Stafford has thrown. And that time they had a lot of people coming, Jim. They had about six people on the defense coming on a blitz. And Stafford read it very well and got it to his tight end. You'll see the blitz coming. He didn't have much time to throw. Morris, number 30 from the outside. Corrington comes up and makes a play. Johnny Holland makes a play, but they already have the first down. Harris has caught three balls for 65 yards, and they got a little time to get this play away here. Stafford will have to get a quick count, and now they call time. Standing up is Edwin Simmons calling time, and I think Stafford was unaware of it, but Simmons was watching the clock. And rather than take a five-yard penalty, he has taken a timeout. The score, Texas A&M 28 and Texas nothing. And when we come back, it's first and 10. Texas at the AM 20. We're not a company, but outstanding people come to us every day. People who want to make a contribution to a team and do work that really counts. People eager to see new places, do the unusual, and find the unusual. People who become your friends for life. People just like you. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Navy. The Air Force, the Marines, the Army. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Since its introduction in the U.S., BMW has outperformed the energy crisis, the economic crisis, single-handedly caused the automotive identity crisis, and now makes its most powerful argument against the midlife crisis. All three series BMWs now have the added advantage of a fifth and sixth cylinder. 
For a test drive, contact your authorized BMW dealer. I'm Jimmy Connors, and it's about time you met my partner, my financial side. All successful people and companies have a financial side. Let's go, partner. But to really be a winning team, you might need some help. We need some help. You need Payne Weber behind you for financial expertise, sound advice. We believe the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your financial services. Thank you, Payne Weber. Welcome. You're awfully stiff. You've got to loosen up a little bit. City crowd looking on at Kyle Field and College Station. It is 28 to nothing. The Aggies, Texas, has a big down for them if they're to stay in the ball game. It is first and 10 from the 20 yard line of the Aggies. 2.07 to go in the third quarter. And Fletcher Hayes wide to the left. Stafford. It's the ball up. Ooh. Oh, my. Edwin Simmons is hit by that man again, Alex Morris, the freshman out of Arlington, Texas. And that's a gain of about a half a yard, and that's all. It is second down and nearly 10. This, when you get hit like this, makes your lips rip, man. It lights up your eyeballs. Here's Stafford. He's looking at the outside, trying to throw the ball to Harris. And he's just going to dump it here. Watch this. Perfect timing. Edwin hung on to the ball, though, man. Like that. Even with that pass, Brett is under the 500 mark. 6-4-13. Second down. By again, the blitz is on, look out, and there he is, that's Domingo Bryant, the big play man of the Aggie defense. He has four interceptions, five fumbles, and now six sacks on the year. Domingo Bryant, he comes on one side usually, and Morris comes on the other side. Here comes Domingo, he's cheating up, and what's the, ju what's the jump he gets, Jim? There's no one out there to block him. Stafford sees him right now, Domingo Bryant, great play. And it's third down and 24 from the 34. Clock continues to run less than a minute to go in the third quarter. Hayes to the left. And Gay to the right. Edward Simmons is on the wing. Stafford is going to be trapped and sacked at the 40-yard line. John Roper has his third sack of the year. I'm sorry, I pointed to him, Jim. I think it was Moeller. They got 82 and 83 mixed up. Whatever. <laughs> They both can play a great game in running down in the third quarter. 20 seconds to go, and it is fourth down. And, oh, let's see, 20, 30 yards to go. There's a Goodyear blimp, and I'm sure that Captain Don McDuff up there is not too happy because he's at the controls, and he is an alumnus of the University of Texas. That is a Goodyear blimp America from Houston giving us all these fine shots in the College Station Bryan area. Now time has, well, one second still shows as the flag goes down. And we'll see what this is. Delay of game, Texas. So it is going to be fourth down and about 30 yards. The BMW 5 Series. Three luxury sedans that transform information into exhilaration. Fuel into adrenaline. And other sports sedans into idle pretenders. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. For a test drive, contact your authorized BMW dealer. Hey there, handsome, it's easy to see. You're the world's best looker, at least to me. You've got a style that makes me stop and stare. You turn me on with the clothes you wear. He's dressed in never only. Looks best in. Looking guys in America wear members only. Only for me. Members only. Shirts, pants, sweaters, and of course, the jacket. Jim Simpson with Paul McGuire from Kyle Stadium and College Station. No happy faces on the Texas side of the stadium tonight. Around the state where Texas fans are gathered. It is fourth down. They're going to try a field goal. Jeff Ward will try one of 57 yards. From 57 yards out, he's got a great leg, and he's got it! And Texas is on the board with a 57-yard field goal. 
And the fans during their sway in the stands hardly take notice. Ward, you, talk, uh, you kept telling me what a strong leg this man has. 57 yards. I mean, he drilled that ball. And I don't know if it got a piece of the upright on the left-hand side or not, Jim, or the right-hand side of your screen. Watch, he'll turn the strings. Perfect hold. And Ward just powered the ball. Well, that's a tough way to tie the Southwestern Conference record of 19 in one season as first set by Steve Little of Arkansas. And Fred Akers has some points on the team. I can't help but think of what Fred said before this game. He said the Aggies defense is as good as any I have seen since becoming head coach at Texas. They have proved that tonight with their only strike from 57 yards away. Do you remember back in the third quarter just at the end when Texas A&M refused the delay of game penalty? Mm -hmm. hmm. 28 to 3. I don't think they're worried about it. Ward now will kick off. Onside, maybe. Hey, what a leg he has got. And he is a junior. Only. At another year. Let's see. Telson is a senior. He'll be graduating. 28 to 3, 1454 to go. In the final quarter here, Kyle Fields. Sell out crowd. They're trying the onside kick. And let's see whether or not it worked. The ball is still up for grabs. As it's Texas it thinks they have it. Well, let's let the officials unwind here. Texas has the ball. They haven't said yet, have they? Now they help him up, and Texas does have the ball. That's January. That linebacker that was not expected to play too much because of the cat bruise. Jim, do you know that on the onside kicks that we have watched, and even in a Redskin game on Monday night, the ones that are straight ahead seem to work better than trying to drill the ball down. Look at Ward just tap it. Now watch him go in there. They're taking a shot at it. Well, we have a new quarterback in there. Stafford, who brought them this far, is out. And Todd Dodge, who started the year, and who set a Texas passing record for yardage last year is the quarterback. And we'll try to rally Texas. Here comes Todd Dodge looking and throwing and overthrows his man, number 14, Russell Hayes. It is second down and 10. Jim, that's the best looking pass, pass protection and pass route that I've seen tonight. He just overthrew his man. He's cold. Let's look at some stats now. Now take a look what happened. The first half, everything was close. Right together. Then take a look at Texas A&M in the second half. 254 yards. But the key to this whole thing is the turnovers. That and the fact that Texas on a, on a two-yard line or one-yard line could not score. Second down, Gay right, Hayes left. Dodge a little trouble with the snap. Dropping straight back. He's got an arm, hadn't he? And that ball is almost intercepted by Larry Kelm at the 34-yard line. Man downfield was Everett Gay. Elm number 65, and it is third down and 10. Well, they got the onsides kick back, but now the Longhorns have to convert here. You know who that is along the sideline? That's his son. Danny Akers. Jim, the problem, the problem with the pass patterns are this, because of the blitzing of Texas A&M, they're keeping their backs in Texas in the backfield, so you're only sending three men in the pattern that the linebackers are getting depth. They're not worried about backs coming out of the backfield. Simmons almost took a step the block there and this is a throw over here to Everett Gay. Gay's got the football and got yardage. That's a good looking run there inside the 20 and down to about the 15 or 16. Carrington put him down but first down Texas they are down by 25 with 14 and a half minutes to go. You can't let up on this team. Now watch Gay. He's at the bottom number 19. He catches the pass but watch where he runs. About another 35 yards across field. Corrington number 10 right there. They got blocked. Watch he comes back in and makes the play. Corrington from the 16-yard line. This time, both Hayes and Gay both go to the right. Now the Yankee fans, who thought they had this wrapped up, get back into it. Dodge looking, Dodge going over to the sideline there. There's no good intended for Gay, and they're going to throw a flag against number 16, Wayne Asbury, who's playing over there tonight for the injured Daryl Austin. Asbury got there just a little bit too soon. Question is, no, there's no question on it. I don't think so. Yeah, pass it that way. 
And Texas moves even closer. Todd Dodge is really throwing strikes. Take look, watch this. He just fires his ball to the outside. And when he does, you can see the arm of Asbury. Just no chance for Gay to catch the ball. Todd Akers realizes his team does have a chance, but it is down by 25 points. But a quick score here, and you never know. As they'll take this ball down inside the five yard line. Texas Aggie defense in the last 11 quarters, no touchdown. Hey, I mean, now bring it out again. Let's get this thing yeah, measured that's, up. That's too far to take it, gentlemen. Well, it's a 15 yard penalty, but. Only go half the distance to go. Only on. half the distance, that's right. We have a spot foul. Defensive interference. Automatic first down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From the five yard line. First down, Longhorns. Now Hayes is running toward the sideline. And has taken himself out of the game. Apparently there were 12 men on the field. Going double tight end, Jim. And he didn't realize it there for a while, or did realize it and did that to confuse him. First down is top dodge, and I'm just not going to work. Down he goes. Down he goes back at the 10-yard line. He slipped right there. And don't blame that on Todd Dodds. Before the game and watching the warm-ups, we saw a lot of folks try to stop, plant their feet, and turn and slip. Well, Todd, yeah, Todd Dodge is trying to bootleg. It's all by himself. Domingo Bryant just sitting out there. He didn't take the fake and take a look, and he just goes down. Domingo Bryant was there anyway. And Fred Akers, did you like this play or not? No. Second down and goal to go from the 10. Short drop, looping the ball out, and no good, and no flag. Hayes, the nearest man to it, double team. I get and that it's third down from the ten. I get that big tight end, William Harris, in there, number 95, and just let him work, get in just inside the end zone, right up the middle of the field. He's been the most successful pass catcher. One of the best runs after a catch we've seen tonight has been by Everett Gay to get him down into this position. Well, they're doubling up on both sides on the on the two wide guys. And they're playing a linebacker short and the safety strong or deep on the tight end. Let's see. Third and goal. They need touchdown. Dodd looking. Look at this. Down going for the score is Russell Hayes. And that's a touchdown. Texas, the first for the Longhorns tonight. And that makes it right back to what we call a ball game, folks. Heads up play that time by Todd Dodge because he's going to look to his right. Take a look at the left of the screen. He looks over here right now. He wants to see Gay. He doesn't see Gay. Hayes breaks clear. One-on-one -on -one coverage on that side. He gets the touchdown. Perfect pass. And Jeff Ward in to add the extra point. And let's see if they try another onside kick. Why not? You got to pull out all the stops if you're going to win this thing. 28 to 10, 13 and a half minutes to go. Here they come. You're going to see Todd Dodge look to his left, looks to his right, comes back to his left, and just fires that ball to Hayes into the end zone touchdown. Back to Kyle Field, 28 10, the Aggies. We're not a company. But no company has more pride in what they do, or more pride in how well they do it. We offer you a meaningful and fulfilling future. One that goes far beyond the ordinary. One that brings with it the respect and admiration of Americans everywhere. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Air Force. The Marines. The Army. The Navy. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Not long ago, Japan's premier motorsports magazine for the first time, devoted an entire issue to a motorcycle. But even more astonishing is that this, the most honored motorcycle in Japanese history, isn't Japanese. BMW, the legendary motorcycles of Germany.
football, the All-American game. The CFA on ESPN is brought to you by Colt, imported for Dodge and Plymouth, built by Mitsubishi in Japan. By IBM and the growing family of IBM personal computers. And by the financial professionals at Payne Weber Incorporated. This young man wonders, if it's a young man, <laughs> are they going to try the onside kick again? They <laughs> just might. Bebo's horse. Jim, they've, they've taken and put all receivers, defensive backs up on the line waiting for the onside kick. If he's going to, if Ward's going to kick the ball away, go ahead and let him do that. But it, the deep men are only at the 20 yard line. I was going to say there's nobody beyond them. They're convinced that Texas wanting to go to the Cotton Bowl and win this game naturally will try everything because they've got less than 14 minutes left to play. Good word to tilt that ball way down and just pop it straight up in the air. Nine men up front for the Aggies and they're going to try it again. And this time it is covered by the Aggies. James Flowers getting up. Got a cornerback over there, and they're usually sure-handed people. So now let's see how the Aggies play it as Murray will come out, whether they're going to play it the same way, pass and run, or get a little conservative and run some time off the clock. Play it the same way. Do the things that got you the 28 points because you're doing them very well. You've got a strong-arm quarterback. You've got a tremendous game plan. Don't go away from it. Murray on the handoff, and Vic has got no place to go. James McKinney down at the bottom there, and McKinney has Murray a little pat on the helmet as he goes by. Now you go wide with a play. Second down, and look at that Shea Walker clapping his hands to get that offense going again. You would think they were not leading by 18 points. Murray, 10 of 17, three touchdowns. Oops, well, this is Vic trying to get out of all this. And McKinney is down the line to make the tackle again. And this time, again, no gain. It is third down and ten. Jim, uh, is this Ty Ellard that misses the play? Now, he's coming across. He's being blocked there by the tight end, but he's got Vic in the backfield. This is the play. He slows him up. They don't gain any yardage. In fact, they lose a yard. I mean, it could have been a loss of about six. But they still stopped them from getting back to the original line of scrimmage. Third down and long, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State for most of the nation Saturday. Paul and I'll be there. The rest of you, most of them on the East Coast, will get West Virginia and Syracuse. Third down, let's call it 11. Nickelback situation for Texas. Murray back to throw. Has the time. Now running out of time, and he can make the first down by running. And Will, that's a good block run by Shea Walker as Murray gets down to about the 35-yard line. Walker did an outstanding job of screening off the only potential tackler that Murray had. The man, the man that brings us down is going to be January 28th. But watch Murray. You talk about heads-up quarterbacking right here. The blitz is on. All right, here comes January. He's chasing Murray. When Murray cuts back in, he doesn't want to go out of bounds. Shea Walker is getting a block downfield, screens out Tillman, and then January makes the play. But what Murray did is turn. he turns back in to keep the clock going. First down from the 36-yard line. Second man through. That is the rookie who fumbled earlier, Harry Johnson, does not fumble this time and picks up six yards down to the 30-yard line. And all the time, time is going off the clock. 11.45 left. 28-10, the Aggies lead. At one time, it was 28 to nothing. And now that the game is not real exciting, I want to say happy Thanksgiving to, to my mother out in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> I love this game. I love it. <laughs> Second down and five to go. That is Vic. Look at that. Look at the running room he's got. Stood up there by Stephen Braggs, number six, but he's got the first down at the 25-yard line. And that first down means four more downs to take time off the clock. They're running Tony at you. They run Woodside. They run Johnson. And they run this man, number 43, Vic. And watch it right up in the hole. Keeps and, those legs moving. And Paul are doing just what you said. Stick with your game plan. Throw a little bit. Run a little bit. Stay inside on them. They've been able to move the ball there. There's no sense in changing your game plan. I don't care how far you are ahead. Here's Vic here standing off, and Vic picks up five more yards. It's down to about the 20-yard line. 
They're running to the right side mainly because you've got Dawson over there and Doug Williams over there, and you've got big targets that you can break off of. And, and Williams is having a great game. So is Dawson. Why not keep going there until they stop it? You just run the plays that work until someone stops it, and you don't send down and say, hey, we worked on this play for five minutes last week. Let's try it. Not now. Just Jeff, do what you do best. Excuse me, Paul. Jeff Nelson was hurt. He is back in the ball game and is off to the left as they pitch the ball back this way. And Vic has got no place to go. And it is third down. There's Jeff Nelson walking back. He took two vicious hits, one of which really put him out on the sidelines after he picked up a first down at the 20-yard line. Flag is down on the field. We're going to have a personal foul here. Doug another consultation. Doug Williams made a block, and then all of a sudden he broke back out to the outside. He got he got behind the ball carrier and just shoved him in the back. And then there was an exchange of pleasantries <laughs> on this beautiful Thanksgiving day. All right, there's Vic. See, see Doug Williams right there. Oh, there's another big difference. Here it comes. Well, look at him. Oh my! Wait a He's gonna get up there, isn't he? In your face! In your face! Yeah. Oh, no, all of a sudden, don't tell me. One against the white team. And one against the red, against team. The red okay. team. Okay. Let's get back to next year in the Southwest Conference, although okay. this year is not yet over. Texas has 11 seniors who start. All right, 11 out of 22. Texas A&M has two on defense who start. And four, five on offense who start. Red team the ball will be at the same spot. No. They'll all set. Rather young ball clubs. Perhaps the Aggies, the younger ball club. Second down and six, 28 to 10 the score. And Kevin Murray is a butter sophomore, and he has proved tonight he's going to be a power in the Southwest. Look at this, Vic and Tony, two to one. They're out rushing Texas. That's a nice combination to have, isn't it? Murray willing to throw. Now he's got that whole side open again if he wishes, but throws toward the end zone, too low, flagged down on the near side of the field. Nelson could not get back to the ball on the run. Murray couldn't get it to him. But there's I, a flag clear across on the other side of the field. I think a legal man downfield. All right, let's no. see. No. Offensive pass Passive. interference. Well, so close. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere near. But that's going to cost the Aggies 10 big ones. 15 big ones he's marking off. Beg your pardon. Pass interference. Offense, loss, loss of down, down. the fourth down. Now there's pass interference there on the near side of the field when the ball was thrown clear to the other side of the field and was uncatchable. Jim, and I'll tell you one other thing. When Murray sees the film on this, where he was to the outside, he might have been able to score well, I thought he's if he run. was going to run the football because he had the whole outside wide open to run the ball, but he also had a man in the end zone. He could have picked up at least the first down and maybe scored. All right, his fourth down. And 20 to go, and they're going to punt. That is Stump back there punting, I believe, instead of Shantz. Yes, it is. And Stump has done a good job. That ball's going to stay inside the 10, down to about the 8. Texas trails by 18, but have the ball inside their 10. The home gym that treats your body to a nine-station workout. Trim Track. Durable, no-nonsense construction. Yet Trim Track can be yours on this special TV offer for just $39.95. It's a rowing machine. Perfect exercise for flattening the tummy. And you'll love quality touches like the padded seat and smooth as silk track action. The padded footlock is perfect for sit-ups. Gives you a trim, tight waistline. Hop on your knees for arm curls. Does miracles for arms and neck and chin. Trim Track. It's the fast track to the slender, younger figure you've been dreaming of. Just $39.95. Have your credit card ready and call now. Here's how to order. To order your Trim Track, call toll free. 1-800-544-1000. Or send $39.95 plus $5 for shipping and handling to Trim Track. P.O. Box 121, Plainville, Connecticut, 06062. 
North Carolina and Missouri, Villanova, and UNLV. The first two games of the Great Alaska Shootout tomorrow night live from Alaska on ESPN starting at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Oh, did he lose the ball or is that a pass? It's a pass. He's turning around saying to Joe Johnson, that's a pass, that's a pass. Ball slipped right out of Todd Dodge's hands. Second Jim, down. Jim, down here playing the right corner for Texas A&M, either I'm going blind or it's Jeff Holly, number two, who is listed as a wide receiver. That's right. But then again, Paul, remember Donovan Pitts listed as a defensive back is playing offensive wide receiver for Texas. Aha. Uh -huh. See, they didn't tell us about that. No. They have you listed as a wide receiver, young man. Second down and ten. 28 to 10. Oh, look at Dodge is in trouble inside the five. Johnny Holland, number 11. That's why the Football Red Association voted him All-American. Now, let me just tell you another thing. First of all, they did not do anything differently offensively, did they? No. Nope. Same with their game plan. Now, watch them defensively. They can sit back and let Texas march up and down the field going to prevent. Wrong. Here comes Holland. Todd Dodge has no chance, and that other man in the back is a safety, Domingo Bryant, and they're blitzing down here with nine minutes to go. 18-point lead. They have not changed their defense. Third down. And 15 to go. Sean, uh, Todd Dodge in the end zone. Better get it out. Puts it up for grabs, and nobody can get to it. By the way, there were five red shirts back there and two in white and orange. And Johnny Holland, you want to know why he's an All-American? So far, he's got 11 tackles and I think three assists or four assists so far in this ball game. And an interception and a sack. An interception, a forced fumble, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> That's not till next month. Oh, I'm sorry. He's... 28 to 10. Texas got the ball in terrible field position, but made it even worse on themselves because of the great defense of the Aggies. Now they got a kick out of their own end zone. And here is John Telchik kicking. Ball picked up by Hawkins. Where is he going to go? Trying to get over to this side if he can. Inside the 50 and run out of bounds at the 49-yard line. 8.47 to go. Time running out. On the Longhorns, the Aggies lead by 18 points. Racing. From the inside, no one covers it like Auto Week. Auto Week makes you an insider at the world's great race circuits every week. In the pits, behind the scenes, even in the cockpit with racing driver columnists in Formula One, NASCAR, and CART. Inside coverage just days after the race. And Auto Week puts you inside the world's most exciting cars, right behind the wheel. Auto Week takes you inside the whole automotive scene, personalities, great cars of the past, columnists with inside scuttlebutt. Let Auto Week make you an insider, too. Call for a year subscription to Auto Week. 52 issues at the basic price of $23, just 44 cents an issue. Call 1-800-544-1000. And get this $8 Auto Week t-shirt absolutely free. Call right now, 1-800-544-1000. Let Auto Week make you an insider to... Where you going, it's make alone. There's a style in your life. Hi. Mm, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> hey, how did the doors turn out? Oh, right. <laughs> no other beer is brewed and aged like exceptionally smooth Michelob. Where you going, it's Michelob. He could have stopped the fight. He could have saved his best friend's life. But now, the one thing he can't do is walk away. He's had one professional fight, and one man is dead. To pee pee. He's going to have to kill me. You can't win! Rocky IV. Rated PG. Now playing. Check newspapers for a theater near you. 1967 was the last time the Aggies went to the Cotton Bowl, and there they upset Alabama. By the score of 20 to 16. That's a long time between trips to Dallas. And straight ahead is Tony. Breaks a couple of tackles. Tony picks up eight yards down to the 36-yard line. 
And the clock runs down against Texas. Jim, there's, we've seen a number of missed tackles by this defense, but again, this is Hager, number 60, coming down the line of scrimmage. Hits Tony right in the hole. Tony breaks off, but I think Dulavon had something to do with that because he also hit Hager and knocked him off the tackle. Tony with 73 yards now on 19 carries. A chance to up that a little bit and very little, but very close to the first down. Looks like he's about a half a yard shy. And they've not yet blown the whistle to stop that clock. Jim, the one thing about runners like they have here at, at Texas A&M, Tony, Vic, Woodside, Johnson, they have so much confidence in their offensive line. When you watch them run to a hole, they're not picking and choosing. They know the hole. They believe that the hole is going to be there with their offensive line. And they run hard right at it. Well, I was backfield for one time, and Tony takes a shot at the line of scrimmage but picks up the first down. Well, you know, when we did the game with SMU here, Paul, we started out talking about Gary James and Reggie Dupard because there are two men averaging better than 100 yards a game. You can't find a back among the Aggies averaging anything near that, but you can find four or five backs that can get you 60 to 70 yards every time you go out. And they have a lot of confidence on that right side with Dawson and Williams over there. Just take a look. Williams, they all just sealed down to the inside. Johnson's coming out to block. That was PB number 42 that came up and missed an, a tackle. Vic is the man back there now. He's got the ball, and as he stood up, good defensive play there by Texas. Let's see if we can see who it is that gets up. And McKinney. Yep, that's McKinney. He has played a game without James McKinney on defense. You know what happened after on that play? Doug Williams tried to set and get position on him, and when he did, McKinney just slid to the inside and made the play. Seven minutes left in the game of a 28-10 affair. Last year at Austin, it was 37 to 12, the Aggies and a stunner, and tonight they've controlled this ball game nearly all the way. But Texas has hurt itself with turnovers, and there is a quarterback draw, and Murray picks up four or five yards. Hanging on to him is Llewellyn. Second down. If Llewellyn doesn't make the tackle, Jim, Murray's got a touchdown because the whole they had the whole defense spread out. They were all jammed up in the line of scrimmage. This was a call play. It was a quarterback draw play. They take one step back, Murray, and goes up the middle. Llewellyn grabbed him. He didn't. It have been 35. Remember, though, that time is going off the clock. It's down to 6-10 now. All of this to the benefit of the Aggies. They got third down. They're looking for a first down. Beautifully thrown pass. And the ball is caught, or not caught by Nelson, but interfered with by Tony Tillman trying to cover Nelson. That ball was well thrown. And they'll have another consultation. The ball, the ball, it looked a little bit like it might have been underthrown, Jim. And when Nelson was coming back to the ball, Tillman had to hold on to him. He's, he was caught right in the middle. Here comes Murray back to throw now. And he knows he has one-on-one -on -one coverage. Nelson on Tillman when he throws the ball. Now, here, look what happens. Here it is. The ball is underthrown just a little bit. You know, I don't really see the pass interference on this call. Neither do I. But so much for my beautifully thrown pass. <laughs> pass, pass. It was underthrown. Defense, 15 yards. Automatic first down. Uh, first down at the 11-yard line. 6.04 to go. I just don't, I really don't see the pass interference here. They're both going for the ball. They both have their arms together. The ball is underthrown. No, sir. And that is Johnson, the freshman in motion. That is Vic. Oh, Touchdown. look at this hole. Look at this hole. Touchdown just walking in. And Vic has scored yet another touchdown. His second of the night. From 11 yards out, it's 34 to 10. And let's face it, this team here is on its way to the Cotton Bowl for the first time since 1967. And is look there a out in your mind? Look out, they are fired up. They're a good football team. That's the second 11-yard run for Vic. Franklin adds the extra point, and it's 35-10. This is like almost like a rollout draw play here with Vic, and he was supposed to go up into the middle of the field. He did not do that. Senegal number five committed himself to the inside, 
as a safety did not stay to the outside, Jim. Vic breaks it to the outside, and no one touched him. If Madam Butterfly would have had an 86 Colt four-door sedan with optional turbo power, Lieutenant Pinkerton would never have gotten away. Colt, imported for Dodge and Plymouth, built by Mitsubishi in Japan. Colt, it's all the Japanese you need to know. If you're waiting to buy a personal computer, you may have questions about power expandability, and dollars and cents. For the complete answer, take a close look at IBM. An IBM PC runs thousands of programs, expands easily, and prices are better than ever. So don't wait. Once you take the first step, the rest come easy. IBM Personal Computers. 35 to 10, the Aggies are on the way to the Cotton Bowl. Texas will go on down to play in the Blue Bonnet Bowl. And the 12th man team is out there again. With Slater, the kickoff man. Well, who would have thought it? Aggies were slightly favored in this game. You go down, superior kicking game to Texas, but that has not been a factor tonight. Superior offensive line to Texas, they said, but that's been negated by the defense of a and m And now Darren Nelson bringing the ball back, and down he goes with Holly. The man listed as a wide receiver who is now a defensive back. Well, on the sidelines, this man has reason to celebrate. Number one, he is 42 years old today. Happy birthday, Jackie Sherrill. At number two, in a space of four years, he's taken the Aggie program and has taken it right to the Southwestern Conference Championship and to the Cotton Bowl. Five and six, five, five and one, six and five last year when that six win was over at Texas at Austin and then nine and two, barring the huge upset with less than six minutes to go and a 25-point difference. Todd Dodge trying to get something and has overthrown everybody downfield. Ball intended for Metcalf down there. And you know if Texas A&M scores one more touchdown and an extra point, they will have his age on that scoreboard? 43. 42 said 42. 42. 42. That's right. Don't I'm, start I'm that again. two points. <laughs> Well, how much, how much, or nine seven? Paul, let's get serious for just a moment, because we know nothing here. Last week, we were told that Foz Facio was out. We were told Lou Holtz was going to Pittsburgh. That is untrue. Of course, he's one of the Notre Dame. They're going to talk to Pat Jones of Oklahoma State. We understand that's Wednesday, but I'll, I'll finish my thought in a moment. Here's Todd Dodge. And he's throwing out here, and that's a good defensive play there. Everett Gay, Holly was defending him, and it is third down. Now, to what I was about to say. We're only commenting on what has been on every single newspaper, whether from Houston, College Station, or Dallas, that we read today. There are some rumors that Fred Akers could lose his job. We don't believe it should is true or should be true. But where there are rumors, you're going to hear the rumors a little bit stronger tomorrow. He, I think, will weather all of that. We know nothing at all. We're just commenting because the newspapers have commented and the people are talking. I, I certainly, when you look at a scoreboard 35 to 10, some people would say, yeah, but I think their heads will say, man, this guy brought a team to expect to finish down the line to the last day fighting it out for the championship. And now you can see running down there, Hunter, and Hunter's still down the sidelines and pushed out of bounds after picking up the first down. Texas A&M thinking about a pass play, and all of a sudden they, they, they run this play to Hunter. Watch, he'll sit up in the back, and he cuts back against the grain. The pursuit is over to one side. Hunter breaks back into the outside, and now it's a, a foot weight race. Picks up the first down. They're at the, about, what, the, almost the 49-yard line. Jim, one, one more thing about Akers. I just think it's a shame after what, you know, and we must repeat, here's a team that was picked, should have been at the bottom, basically the bottom of, of their conference. And the job that, the, that his coaching staff and Akers did with this team is remarkable this year. And you don't reward a man by firing him. Here is Dodd going deep, and he has overthrown his man deep in the end zone, and that's Pitts, the man is listed on our roster as a defensive back, but is playing offense. Up in the sky, the Goodyear blimp, the America, and that, of course, tonight is Don McDuff from Anson, Texas, flying it. And we'd like to thank the folks of Goodyear and all their blimps across the country. They've been with us, and this is their 60th straight year of covering from the air. Big sporting events, and we hope that it'll make it 61 with ESPN next year. 
if I if I could, I would invite them all to come to Hawaii. But it might take them 10 weeks to get there. We and think. Then, you know, that's right. We think Mickey Whitman and Al Wazalewski because they are part of it. Here's Dodge back. Going down the sidelines, and that ball is bumped off. Intended again for Eric Metcalf. And that is Alex Morris breaking it up again. Well, his head broke it up because the ball hit him right smack in the back of the head. It popped up in the air. You know, we were down in Baton Rouge, Jim. I went up, my wife and I went up on, in the Goodyear blimp. Enjoy it? Oh, I loved it. It's fabulous. Scared? No, are you kidding? <laughs> are you? <laughs> yeah. 519 to go. Sure, it was scared. And here's third down for Texas. Dodge two for 11. He got him going for one touchdown. And now the handoff and not much there for Darren Norris. The big fullback at his fourth down. Aggies, let's face it, Texas fan or Aggie fan, the Aggies have had the better of this ball game tonight, offensively and defensively, and in the special teams. But what really crucified the Longhorns, four turnovers, two of which led to early touchdowns. Two of the first three scores were on those turnovers as a result of those turnovers. 35-10, the Aggies. problem ladies watch this <laughs> no one has rougher terrain than japan that's why they need rugged four-wheel drive where's my star my butterfly and that's why they build the 86 colt vista imported for dodge and plymouth they're here built by mitsubishi in japan colt it's all the japanese you need to know you know i'm the first guy to admit i love members only jackets they have such great style and fit. I own one in black, white, blue, gray, and red. And I wear them all the time because they're so comfortable. But I don't believe for one minute that they make you look more attractive. Because that's something you either have or you don't. Hey, Vince. Pain. Then again, why take chances? The best looking guys in America wear members only. Hey, Tom. Can I drink? Holiday greetings from Mikolo. Five minutes, ten seconds to go, and if there's a chance for Texas at all, they will have to convert this fourth down and ten situation from their own 48-yard line. Dodge fires the ball, another turnover, that's the fifth of the night. That's Holly with the ball, he's caught by Hayes from behind. But the Aggies have the ball at the 40-yard line. Five turnovers. Jim, Todd Dodge had a man wide open downfield, and I think it was Gay. Holly makes the play, but look from the wide angle of this place. Just take a look at the cutting towards the middle. And that's Gay. He is open. He just overthrows the ball. Holly makes a good play on the ball. They bring the ball back. They're back at the 40-yard line in great position. Hayes makes this, the tackle. It's all over. Now first down for the Aggies from the 40-yard line. Five minutes to go. Coming back out. A little late coming back out. <laughs> People are going a lot as Chris Ford. Chris Ford now goes in motion. And they're going to call time. And they got Craig Stump in there at quarterback. And they had Chris Ford in there. And they had too many people in there. And so the Yankees call timeout. A little confusion after that interception. Keith Woodside in there talking. And here's your quarterback comparison for Texas 8 of 25. One touchdown, three interceptions. For Murray, 10 of 17. Better than 50%, three touchdowns and no interceptions. And that's a big swing right there. Well, our congratulations to Texas A&M. This game is not over yet, but it is obvious they're going on to the Cotton Bowl. That is Jackie Carroll for getting them there and on his 42nd birthday. On the other side of the field, well, they're going to the Blue Bonnet Bowl and.
take nothing away from Texas. They're not going to the Cotton Bowl, but they did a lot this year that nobody thought they would do. Get this far. Knocking off Baylor last week to knock Baylor out of a certain Cotton Bowl bid and give Texas another chance. But they've fallen short tonight to the Aggie team. It is now first down. And here come the Aggies with Chris Ford going out wide to the left along with Jeff Nelson. Murray's a fine quarterback, Jim. Stumped the man in there now. He started last year with, after Murray got hurt. Puts the ball out there. They're still throwing the ball. This is Jeff Nelson. Jeff Nelson. Jeff Nelson. Touch. Nope. 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 One or two yard shot. <laughs> By that much. And look at the first guy on the field is Murray. Evan Murray is down there without a helmet on. He ran all the way down to the end zone to Nelson. Nelson has also broken the career receptions for Texas a and That's his 92nd, and it is a big one. And look at Stump. I told you they want to get up Jackie Sherrill's age. Boy, what a great move by Nelson. He just gets splits the two defenders right there, and he's almost in the end zone, right to the one-foot line. Flags all over the place, and I, I'm going to tell you what. I don't know whether they call that because Murray ran on the field or not, but Murray left the bench without a helmet on, and ran all the way down to the goal line, and you can't leave the bench. Maybe it. <laughs> that, looks, that looked like a salute of an old club I belonged to back in Youngstown, Ohio. In any event, <laughs> I was watching Paul Dodd. Here's Stump again. All right, here's the shot to Nelson, and watch this move back here. He slips. They Dead fall ball. down. Substitution infraction. Offense. Still first down. Sorry, I didn't catch what he said, Paul. It's it's because Murray ran, ran on, on the, the field. field. But I still don't understand what he said. It's I can give you the old salute we had at the club I was on. That's you're not allowed more than the people on the field are supposed to be on there at any given time. Lord wide to the left. Oh, it's at the five and a half yard line. That's Tony. Tony gets down to about the five-yard line, and there's another flag down. That flag came out of the back of the end zone. That may push him back Play a little a bit for holding, huh? No. no. Too many men on the field. Yep. 12 guys. Well, they get that back, didn't they? They had 12 guys in the field, I think, didn't they? Half the distance. I see that there's a, well, we'll listen to this for a second. I want to say so. Well, men on the field, a little participation, defense. Still first down. Now Murray runs on the field, they get a five-yard penalty, right? Right. Offense. They have 12 men on the field, they only get a two and a half yard penalty. <laughs> Not fair. If one's going one way and one's going the other. I told you they want to put his age up on that scoreboard. 42. I wonder if they thought about that really. I hadn't before you told me. And look at this. Into the end zone, carrying the ball for the first time today is Ira Valentine, a senior. And they got 41 of them up there. 41 to 10, the Aggies. He's not a happy man there. No, sir. Just hang in there. You got a good football team. All right, here comes Valentine. Everybody goes to the right with Tony. Everybody's looking for Tony to get the ball. Valentine, a new man in the ball game. First play, touchdown. And on comes Eric Franklin to add the extra point. I thought the crowd was getting rowdy after they scored their last touchdown and threw things in the booth until I found their little cotton balls they're throwing into the booth. Better than they're going to the Orange Bowl today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if they were throwing those at us, we'd really be in trouble. Game that was close. At the end of the first half, the score was seven to nothing. Since then, Texas A&M has now scored 35 points in the second half, and Texas has scored 10. Jackie Sherrill, this is after the touchdown, his reaction. That's his age, 42. Texas A&M, 42, and Texas 10. 12 o'clock, four minutes, 10 seconds to go. Out here, it's me alone against the course. 
But in the financial world, you need all the help you can get. You need the Payne Weber army behind you. Even golf legends can use some financial backup. Payne Weber is ready to roll, putting all its resources at your command. We believe the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your financial services. Thank you, Payne Weber. Now that's the kind of army you want behind you. Choosing the right import can be a nightmare. Colt. Colt? But the 86 Colt is a dream. Easy to buy, and with all the quality and features you expect in Japanese cars. Colt is important for Dodge and Plymouth, built by Mitsubishi in Japan. Colt, it's all the Japanese you need to know. Bob, do you feel a draft? Happy Thanksgiving to you all from College Station, Texas, with a reminder that Saturday night, Walt and I will be in Stillwater, Oklahoma, for Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Both of them are bowl bound. And some of you on the East Coast, many of you on the East Coast, will see West Virginia and Syracuse, which is going to the Cherry Bowl. Ball bouncing along, picked up by a Texas man, and he is buried by that 12-man team. The returner. Well, the returner is not on our depth chart at all as Fred Akers has gone way down. As we just told you, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, West Virginia, Syracuse, Saturday night. That's the time, 7.30 p.m. And then one week from Saturday night, strike up the guitar or ukulele, Paul. Brigham Young is at Hawaii and will be out there at 7.30 Eastern time there also. I haven't seen anything. I just hope, I'm, hope Kozlowski is back for BYU. An exciting receiver from the 24. First down. A dodge throws, and I think he's got his good tight end again. And that's who it is. That's William Harris, and that's his fourth catch of the night. They're running a hurry up offense. They're going right at the line of scrimmage. 357 left. Ball at the 39 yard line. First down, Texas. Wow, that is a catch right there. Had to go high in the air, and that is Everett Gay. The and leading catcher coming into tonight's game, pass catcher. And that's another first down for Texas. 3.43 left. Thompson wide to the left. Dodge throws again on that side. Gay is over there, but that ball is trapped. Out of the second down. Well, Paul, first half, great ball game. As far as the Aggies concerned, the second half was a great ball game. As far as the Longhorns concerned, it was not. But five turnovers. But aside from the turnovers, I would have to say that the Aggies on offense and defense played the better football tonight. There was no question about it. I mean, when you're playing that well defensively, you're going to get the turnovers. But a key to this ball game was, was shutting Texas down on that drive right at the one-yard line. Four cracks to get inside the five and didn't get it. There's Dodge, if he can get it away, he does, and out of bounds. And let's see if they say, nope, they say that Gay did not make the catch. So that is third down. Three and a half minutes left now. They showed Blitz, Blitz and, and Dodge called an audible and tried to move his backs behind him to give him some protection. It didn't help. They still put him on his back. 42 points, the most the Aggies have ever scored against Texas. Last year, 37. This year, 42. Dodge, and they're running after him, and down he goes. That is Dana Batiste, who plays in the spot that Johnny Holland has been playing. And he had a couple of sacks tonight. Fourth down from the 45. Batiste, watch the backside, and Dodge never sees him coming. No one blocked him, and he got hammered. As Todd Dodge turned to throw, Batiste was there. They haven't given up on defense. I'm talking defensively. They're still going after him. Fourth down. They've got 19 to go. Dodge throws, and the ball is up for grabs and not intercepted. And the ball goes over to the Aggies with 2.48 left. And the man that tipped it was, was Bob Adams. Or 
or Adam Bob, excuse me, it was a linebacker number 24. <laughs> I think he got it right the first time. Was it Bob Adams? <laughs> yes, yeah, it. Adam Bob, Bob Adams. But He's whatever. got two first names. Well, Dodd Dodge last year had a bad problem. This year he was replaced in midseason by Brett Stafford, who got him this far. Stafford couldn't do it in this game. Dodge came back, engineered 10 points, although one of those scores a field goal was from 57 yards out on the remarkable foot of Jeff Ward. And there's Vic running some time off the clock. Congratulations to the Aggies and the Cotton Bowl and congratulations again to Texas. They're going on to the Blue Bonnet Bowl. <laughs> and I'm simply saying those Cotton Bowl fans. Look at that. They are going to have to uh, put up to somebody called Bo Jackson. Who may have won the Heisman Trophy by the time they get him on January the 1st of the Cotton Bowl. Jim Brock's group up there always comes up with a good matchup. And Auburn and Texas A&M will be an outstanding matchup. Bo Jackson. Second down and seven. And you know they're not going to put the ball in the air. I do not think. Stump hands off straight ahead. And it's time for us to get the Hartford Group's most valuable players. First of all, this man for Texas. Now remember, Texas did not do much, but Jeff Ward did do a remarkable thing. He tied the conference record for field goals in a single season with his 19th, and to do that from 57 yards out. Our congratulations to a great kicker from Texas, Jeff Ward. But it was too little. And of course, Kevin Murray, look at those statistics. Three touchdown passes, better than 50% of his passes. His running also loosened up the Texas defense, and he is our MVP for Texas A&M. Tony carries the ball now as we come back live, down to the 35-yard line. A flag is thrown, clock is stopped with 1.25 to go. That will be a holding penalty against the offense. I'm really good on diagnosing this one. <laughs> See that? Well, I'll go back and regroup. This is November the 28th. They do not play again either team until the 1st of January. And that's remarkable. You and I get Oklahoma and Oklahoma State Saturday night. And once they get through that game, even though Oklahoma's already committed to the Cotton Bowl, Oklahoma the following week has to play SMU on December the 7th. That's because they started their schedule very late. Like November 1st. I think the two the two fullbacks in this game, Tony and Vic, Jim, have combined for 166 yards rushing. Mm. And rushing. that is, Jim, three times the yardage Texas has total. Third down and 15, and they'll run a play here, I would assume, with 1.12 to go. They'll let the clock run down. They'll let it run down even more if they want. Stump. Pitching that ball out, and Valentine, who has scored a touchdown, and a flag goes down again. Now, will that be face mask? 59 seconds to go. There's a correction, by the way. I thought so. Our Hawaii game, Brigham Young, a week from Saturday night. We'll start at 7 o'clock Eastern time, not 7.30. So as you get prepared to take a look at the Aloha Bowl and all of the waving palm trees and the Pacific Ocean, it's at 7 o'clock Eastern time on December Holy. the 7th. Offense, just line, fourth down. Do we have Hawaiian shirts on? <laughs> Shirt and top. <laughs> Word from on high. 58 seconds to go in counting. This has been a ball game, great ball game in the first half. 7 nothing at the end of the half, as we said, and a great ball game for the Aggies in the second half, putting 35 points on in the second half alone. They earned their way to the first Cotton Bowl since 1967. And now <laughs> they've called timeout with 46 seconds to go. Well, they didn't have enough people on the field, Jeff Texas a &M. Todd Shantz standing back inside his own 40-yard line. Jackie Sherrill celebrating his birthday and the trip to the Cotton Bowl. And they don't keep your heads up, Texas. You've got to play the Air Force in the Blue Bonnet Bowl out on Rice Stadium. And Paul and I and the whole ESPN crew will take off from College Station tonight on our way to Oklahoma and Stillwater, where we'll be there Saturday night. Jackie got a little bump on his head. Yeah, but he, he's got six weeks to get over it. Never feel it. Now Shantz to kick the ball away. 
46 seconds ago. We're just playing out the string here now in the game of the year for these two teams. And this year, for the first time since 1943, Metcalf Cotton Bowl to the winner. The Aggies have taken care of that. Metcalf now calls for a fair catch at the 10-yard line with 39 seconds to go. And here comes Texas out for one last try. Brisk night. That's Russell Hayes, and he's a senior, so this is a disappointing way for him to wind up his regular season career. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. If you were not with us, no score first quarter. Second quarter, seven hard-earned points. Then more turnovers in the third quarter, 21 in that for Texas A&M, 14 in the fourth when Texas got their only 10, and it's 42 to 10. The defense, really, were the, the, both defense and offense, the lines were superb in this game. Uh, Sean showing he's got an arm, getting it over there as far as he can. Another interception. That is the sixth turnover, and that is by Wayne Asbury, who is replacing Daryl Austin over there because of Austin's broken foot. Three of the turnovers meant something. These last two have meant only that Texas could not keep a drive alive to try to crawl closer. In all Texas, look at the six turnovers now. This one really doesn't mean anything. I mean, he was just throwing the ball up in the air. They only had 40 some seconds is down to 32 now you just take a knee and get out of here you don't want to take a chance on getting anyone hurt remember as you saw the detective Todd Dodds this is his senior year at Texas the lose to for the Longhorns they hated Aggies their biggest rivals at Austin last year and then in College Station this year that's not the way you like to finish up a fine career which you set a record for the most passing yards in a single season for Texas 25 seconds they don't have to run another play they can enjoy this knowing they're going to the Cotton Bowl Fred Akers will take his team back to Austin on his way to the Blue Bonnet Bowl but Jackie Sherrill in a space of four years has taken A&M from where they were to where they are and that is on their way to the Cotton Bowl to face Auburn on New Year's Day. The Aggies win it 42 to 10. Come back to College Station in a moment. More jubilation, more celebration with the final word. In an hour or two, these streets will be teeming with people, all going after the same thing the American dream of success. But while there are millions of men and women chasing the American dream, there's only so much of it to go around which is why you should subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Each business day, the Journal gives you a real competitive advantage with comprehensive news coverage, analysis, ideas you can put to excellent use in your work, and business information you won't find anywhere else. Of course, you don't have to subscribe to the Journal, but in a very short time, these streets will be filled with people who do. Call 800-554-9000 for this new journal offer. 13 weeks for just $28 with a money-back guarantee. 13 weeks, $28. Phone 800-554-9000 now for the Wall Street Journal. Saturday, television's best sports actions on the ESPN. First, the NFL Game of the Week's putting on the hit. It's your last chance to see the league's top matchup, and it's always a thriller. And there's a live doubleheader on tap from the Great Alaska Shootout. It's exclusive tournament coverage on the number one network for college basketball. Saturday continues with live CFA action. You'll see either West Virginia Syracuse or Oklahoma, Oklahoma State in the day's best regional matchups. Saturday on television's most exciting network, ESPN. Soon someone who doesn't know anything about you could assign you a new long-distance company. They won't know how much AT&T's clear long-distance connections mean to you. 
or our personalized customer service, our worldwide calling. They won't know unless you tell them. AT&T Long Distance, for over 100 years, when you reached out, we were there. And you can keep it that way. If you're asked to choose, make the choice yourself. Send in your ballot. It's time for the Canon Play of the Game, brought to you by the makers of Canon Cameras. Late in the first quarter, the Texas Longhorns are threatening in a 0-0 game. The Longhorns would have four tries from in close to try and take the lead against Texas A&M. But they would fail, for you see, on fourth down and inches, the Longhorns were gambling for the touchdown. But number 15 for Texas A&M, James Flowers, comes up to stuff the play and keep Texas' Edwin Simmons out of the end zone. The Cannon play of the game. The regular season is over. The Southwest Conference title belongs to Texas A&M. They're going on to the Cotton Bowl. Texas winds up 6-2 in the conference. They're going on to the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Last night, they lit that 55-foot bonfire, the largest in the world, and it's been going on since 1909. They set it the night before a Texas game at home, two nights before they're playing it up at Austin. But it'll burn tonight, and the folks will take a look at that because their team has won, the Aggies. Now, Paul, you and I are going on to Oklahoma State to see Oklahoma and Oklahoma State Saturday night. We're going to see a fine defense in that Oklahoma team, but I'll tell you what, when, it, when, when two teams square off like that, Jim, anything can happen. When you got Oklahoma State, they're a fine football team, coached very well. And the rest of you will see West Virginia Syracuse on the East Coast. 42 years old, by the score of 42 to 10, he's on the way to the Cotton Bowl. Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire, we will see you Saturday night. Do you do this too? Does a pencil in your hand start you sketching on any old piece of paper, drawing heads or figures or little scenes, or maybe your dog? If you like to play around with a pencil, Chances are you have the basic interest needed to help you become a serious art student. Here's how you can find out. Art Instruction Schools will send you free, without cost or obligation, this simple art test. You take it at home in your spare time. Experts will examine and grade your test. Remember, it's absolutely free. Just write or phone for your free art test today. Phone this number now. Operators are waiting. Or write to our test, give your name, address, and age. If you're shopping for a car or a new VCR or any major purchase and don't have money to burn, call this toll-free number and let Consumer Reports help you get the best deal for your money. Call now for Consumer Reports 1986 Buying Guide issue free and get the money-saving facts on over 2,000 brand-name products. It's a gift with your paid subscription to Consumer Reports magazine. Look between the covers of each monthly issue and get a clear picture of which color TV edged out 16 popular brands, which fast foods were considered most nutritious, which cough remedy was judged unsafe by the FDA. Call now and get 11 regular issues of Consumer Reports plus two free gifts with your paid subscription, the 1986 Buying Guide issue and The Medicine Show. Plus, as part of your subscription, the 1987 Buying Guide issue went published, all for just $16. Call toll-free 1-800-544-1000. Speed Week, the super sale of all 140. Eddie.